But I don't know, honestly, how well today we'll end up going over. The past week or so, I have had a lot more time spent trying to keep up with life. <laughs> So between door dashing and all the other little things, I'm trying to make sure that we stay paid, trying to make sure that all the things that need to go through go through. We have definitely fallen behind on both advertising as well as uh, pre-promoting this month's workshops. We, we do have a couple of ideas on the docket for next month, which will be gold. I'm I'm looking forward to bringing those out as we refine them and get exact dates. But more than anything else, I think that continuing to remain consistent to those who would be available is a good thing. And we got Beckles. Don't mind, don't mind uh, me munching on a zero sugar peppermint patty. Well, we got Biggles. I'm not sure if we can hear Biggles at the moment. Hello. Hey, what's going on? Been a hot. Oh, you minute. can hear me. Can okay. I can hear you now. Yes. Not sure. Not sure what you did. I noticed you had joined, and I heard nothing after acknowledging. You were oh, here. it was going through another sound system, my friend. I haven't. Um, I haven't spoken to anybody on my Go XLR or Discord in uh, uh, a, f a few weeks now. So yeah, the you first know. person I've spoken to in in, in, in the virtual world. Well, I, I was wondering. I was actually thinking about you as I was getting ready for this, just because it was one. It's been like. A couple weeks as you mentioned but too i i'm so far behind on almost all my dms i feel like i haven't responded to something <laughs> oh no it's fine we don't we usually don't chat because i'm usually broadcasting yeah. when you do the workshops that's the problem so like in the last couple of weeks i think you've been doing the broadcasting i've been casting races but not today mm. not tonight not tonight. no need tonight well, not I mean, tonight not for a while the, the fun part is trying to mix up the dates. Granted, this is more because I have real life events bookending <laughs> this month. Uh, one one was CRL Worlds, of course, and this other one, uh, we're going to be working at a youth camp. We do it every year. Uh, one of the things that we do there is, aside mentoring young folk, uh, I'm also the bus driver. <laughs> so... <laughs> we ended up renting a bus from a place out of state, and we went all the way down a four-hour drive or so to pick up this bus that I had never driven before in my life. Huh. And, and you got a, do you have a bus license? Yes, I do. Do you need one? Yeah, okay. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You do need a specialized license. Uh, fun fact about me that not too many people know, but one of the things that I was doing as part-time work while i was really over it was about two years ago now but i did bus driving for the local school district so they, they, they go in like they're so desperate for drivers they'll be like oh we will train you we will pay you to train and we will we will even give you a stinking bonus because we're that desperate we need people driving buses Probably because a lot of the kids are hellions nowadays. <laughs> so most of the people most of the people who get in, they, they usually get out just as fast as they turn the bus on and off. <laughs> but Yeah. I, I having did. to put up with I don't know, having to put up with kids in the bus and stuff like that, of course. I don't know how it goes in the States, but you know, I grew up in Australia and kind of like a a rural town so that the bus it was a good an hour on the bus put it that way you'd have to spend Ooh. with a lot of different kids as you go all the way around the the different uh it's out of town so it has to go around all different roads and stuff and eventually gets to your place so uh, I'll, I'll i'll see how uh you react to this one what is the most interesting piece of graffiti you've seen on a bus seat 
But no, I've never had a gra- graffiti in a bus seat. Not in Australia, mate. No. Oh, really? So no. you you got no. everybody has enough moral fiber that they're not gonna be like you know drawing. No. Drawing no. crap all over the seats. And if they would, I'd be upset. Oh man. I started off smaller and then I went I made my way to the back of the back of the bus, you know, as you get older. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just before like, you know, high school and college, I think it was even and then that's it. You know, after that it was like it didn't it like, bus anymore you well, drive. Between between the kids who bring food on the bus and they, they start mm. throwing it at yeah. other kids or Oh wow. The kids who are literally just vandalizing bus seats, throwing whatever they can, you know, choose to put on there. Generally, it's, you know, words that don't need to be said or uh, parts, body parts that don't need to be, (laughs) 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 that don't need to be on the backs of bus seats. They, They literally do. They live up to their reputation. It's it's. Insane. I got bullied. I got bullied a lot in the bus when I was younger as well. Until the young older ones went off, and then I did. Thankfully, I'm not. It wasn't a bully, but I was bullied. So I remember because that's a lot of bus time too. Remember an hour each oh, way. Oh yeah, put it that an way. hour each that's way. That's a lot of bus insane. time. <laughs> that is. That I mean, it would take cool. me uh, twenty minutes on a bike that I would ride sometimes when I was when I was older in high school. I'd ride the bike up the mountains too to go up and down, but. That was a great exercise. I, I still ride a push bike today, actually, uh, around so, the neighborhood and stuff like that, down so, the shops and stuff. Because it's good exercise, but I miss it. But, so, um, so yeah. the downhill's worth the uphills? The uphill, mate. It was one of the hills that I had to get off and push the <laughs> I'd walk, walk the bike up because uh, I, couldn't, I couldn't ride it up. I don't yeah. think anybody could ride it up. It's so steep. But when you go down, it was like you go up the hill and then you go down and it covers all the way down to the school, really. It's just a slow, <laughs> gentle slope. So you don't have to ride. But riding up it is a nightmare. And as soon as you get over the hill, it's scary when you go down. It's like a big dipper, a roller coaster ride. I don't remember. <laughs> I never stacked it once. Never. Thank God I never stacked it once. I probably wouldn't be here to tell you I stacked it. <laughs> but that, that, that hill was just insane. Anyway, uh, I know it's probably that, a lot less than what I really think it is because when you're younger, something's always more dramatic, isn't it? That is true. <laughs> that is very true. They they have one hill around where I grew up. Uh, of course, we were blessed with snow every once in a blue moon. And a lot of kids, they would go to this hill because like, when you're little, this hill is Kilimanjaro. these little kids like they will go up it maybe two or three times on their own max then they'll have dad take them all the way up you know that's just how steep this hill is but it's a city famous hill for just how steep and how big a downgrade it is it's it's one of those one-of-a-kind type hills (laughs) One of the most popular spots when snow does happen, just because everybody ah, wants to. Be and you, and down you just it. jump, yeah, you slid it down. Of course, oh, well, yeah. when I was when I when I when I lived in Minnesota for a little bit, that was the first place I ever lived that had snow, and and I was trying to find hills to go sliding on stuff down, <laughs> just for the hell of it, because I was like, I never slid on stuff down in, in the snow, of course, in beaches and stuff before, but yeah, I didn't find anything massive to go down, and I'd be like, I was older as well too, so I'd be like, I'm gonna break something for sure. When you're a kid, you don't care. Yeah, this thing's like. Uh, so, so you uh, being a, a former a former uh, driver, mate, school bus driver. Do you, do you do the auto? Are you like the auto man? Is it the auto man from the Simpsons? <laughs> Is it, I was trying. To, who's the Simpsons driver? It's a yo uh, dude. It, it, I think it, it actually his name, if I remember, is Otto. Like O T T O. Otto. Yeah. Like, hey man, get in the back yeah. of the bus, man. Yeah. I'm not here. He played guitar man. too, but even. It's <laughs> just like you do something stupid in the bag's like, bro. Yo, little man. What do you call, what do you call Bart? Yo, little man. What's up, little dude? What's up, little dude? I, 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 was, I was definitely more friendly with a lot of them, and I, I let them get away with a little too much. Is it probably why I ended up with vandalism on my seats half the time? <laughs> <laughs> but when it came down to it, yeah, they, they they tended to respect the fact that I didn't mind them having a little bit of fun on the bus and the hmm. the ones the ones who went overboard they they got written up and disciplined enough that they they understood hey there, there's a line don't cross it <laughs> you don't cross yeah. the line but have fun you're gonna have a good time on this bus you cross the line uh, we're all gonna be miserable. 
Well, the bus driver that I had, uh, he used to live around the corner from where I, I used to live. So, you know, you don't, you don't, you know, in your own backyard kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Because he'd easily go talk to my old man and and tell my old man if I was being a little, sh you know, head. So. Yeah, then I'd be in more trouble than it's worth. <laughs> so I kind of tended to behave myself quite a bit on the bus. And that's why I was uh, so one of the last on the bus too, because I was only around the corner from where he lived. So I had to wait to the end. But yeah, uh, uh, and uh, also first to be picked up as well. Probably one of my one of my favorite moments as a bus driver. We we literally had, uh, it was my elementary school route. So, you know, these kids, not even 12 years old yet. Like six to twelve years old, maybe an occasional thirteen year old if they uh, were really good at school. We'll put the quotation marks in there. <laughs> so good they got to stay over an extra year. Uh, but they 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 had they had some really interesting tendencies. Uh, there were a couple times where I ended up stopping the bus, be like, okay, we need y'all to please sit down. At the very least, I understand y'all want to act the fool, but please, yeah. Yeah. at the very least, for your own safety, sit down. And if you don't sit down, I'm not moving this bus. Yeah. No, you don't sit down, you brake check them, my friend. I, you know, <laughs> Just watch them go flying. They, every single one of these <laughs> school buses, at least in the States nowadays, you, you got three, four, five cameras. And if they see you brake check oh, a yeah. kid and yeah, they yeah, brake... Yeah, yeah. They break check their nose. It's not just. Oh yeah, you wouldn't do it. Not I just mean, my just job like... that's liable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. But it, it was... hey, I've got I've got the lady. She's she's watching Jeopardy right now. She's after Jeopardy. I said, do you want to come and do some uh, uh, cut talk to Kendo about some casting? Because she's Ooh. my teacher. She's my mentor. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So I'd like you you guys to chat and uh, I don't know throw some ideas off each other. Maybe a little improv ah. or something like that. I don't know. She's watching Jeopardy right now. It wasn't planned or anything, but I was just like, hey, you know, there's yeah. not many people around and Kendo's here. I mean, geez. Oh, yeah. That, 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 that's... And she's, she's my mentor like you, mate. She's taught me a lot and you taught me a lot. I was like, I want to get two of the half... teachers together here. <laughs> half the fun is, is literally just talking to each other, building rapport with each other. Like, it, it, in all honesty, one of the most glorious things about what we do in esports or sports commentary, whatever it might be, is we can build a rapport and we can have very little skills that we go in with. But if you get two people who are talking about something that they truly enjoy, my goodness, there is there is nothing like that. You know? <laughs> so. you, wait, you wait till they hear stories from this lady, my friend. She'll mm -hmm. tell you anything. She'll tell you when she worked on Broadway. She'll tell you when she's a movie set. She'll tell you what actors she's worked with and all that sort of ah. stuff. She'll be like, ah, ah, stories. There all right. you go. <laughs> so, but then so, again, like exactly the stuff that you spoke about as well, too, in a lot of the you, casting workshops you've had, like, you know, the way of um, how you pause and emphasize on stuff and all that. Like, there was this, like, 101 to me going, wow, this exact same thing that she told me as well. Yeah. It, it, it... I, one of the things that I rediscovered recently, I, I think I'll actually post it. I, I may actually even uh, play the video. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Actually, yeah, let's play. Let's play the stinking video. See how it goes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I'm someone I like a lot of classical music, and this mm -hmm. may be a perfect opening point. One of my favorite violinists is Maxim Vingorov. Uh, he's currently a living violinist and he has actually done in the past master classes on you know violin and i found something or i found a video on youtube and it's him essentially teaching a young lady in in his own language but it's like he's teaching her the, the tone with which that she plays this certain piece and it sounds like you hear her playing it's like okay that that's pretty good and he's just like no 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 understand <laughs> like understand the flow of this understand the feel of this <laughs> so he'll he'll literally get to the point where it's like okay this is this is better let me show you 
Is this, that, is this, is this uh, Max, uh, Max uh, who again? Van, Ma- Van Gloff? Yeah. Van, Ma- Van Gloff? Max- Van Gloff. Yeah, Maxime Van Gloff. Maxime. Yes. Van Gloff. Okay. Yeah. I was, I'm looking it up on YouTube right now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, like, yeah. This dude knows what he's talking about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, no. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to actually throw this up really quick. Just because it would be, it would be a just lot be- of fun in a, in a one-on-one environment just to pull this up. Give me one second. That. Because, because, because. Kansas homeowners. No, not Kansas homeowners. Don't, don't dox me. <laughs> okay. So it's like I, I, I get this uh, specific little spot here. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and full screen this. Uh, And I, it, I bring this up because it was about two years ago. And, and yeah, despite the fact... He's German. That's German, right? Mm-hmm. That's got to be German. Sounds German. Yeah. It, it, part of me wishes I knew the language just so I could hear how he's correcting. But you can see it in the way he conducts himself. Like, service with a smile the whole time. Mm-hmm. And he's just trying to help this young lady understand his perspective. It, It's a very musical direction when I fund yep. uh, live theatre. That's what they do for musical director. Mm-hmm. The, the, the directors will come and, and give you the, okay, I need you to sing it like, you know, these mm-hmm. tones and that tones. And... Well, the, so, yeah. the most brilliant part about this is the differences between what this young lady is playing and then what he eventually gets to the point where he's like, let me show you. And then he plays it to his perfection. <laughs> and you're uh-huh. you're like this is literally the most minute of changes and it makes all the difference in the world in the overarching tone that he is able to maintain it, it, so it, it's brilliant in that respect in it, the, the the vocalization that he tries to get You also notice the little volume changes as well. So he's, he's he's trying to focus on those little minuscule moments uh, of mm-hmm. emphasis to to make to really bring out the emotion of the piece that they're trying to play. Exactly. One second. But I, I bring all this up just because there there was a time, and I posted this video. I was going back through some of my old clips. There was a time where I literally, um, actually, I, I think I forgot to do something today. Ah, oh, crackers. Did I? Did I forget? Did I forget? I I think I forgot. I did forget. That's dumb of me. Oh well. But there was a there was literally a time back in my own uh, personal Discord channel. Uh, this was actually dated July 9th of 2020. 
And it's like life goals. Teach casting the way Maxime Van Garoff teaches vinyl, violin tonality. Really? <laughs> I, oh, wow. I, I, I literally wrote that two years ago. It's like life goals. Teach casting like Maxime Van Garoff teaches violin tonality. By the way, how was the, uh, I, went, I forgot to ask you, the, the, the show that you went to, the uh, event. Which the, one? A couple of weeks ago. Jeez, I, like the, the, the CRL world. How many have you been since then? I I haven't had any uh, other events since then. But uh, it's been a lot. Uh, a lot of my life has been about trying. I thought to make there was sure. one in. Uh, the, well, the, there's one in Dallas next month, isn't there? But I mean, that's the big, uh, the big August. Uh, the, yeah, the August. RLCS But there was Worlds. the one that you went to. Jesse, you went to one a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, the couple of weeks ago was CRL Worlds. See, okay, I don't know all the names. I yeah. just know you so went to one. Like the, I thought it was called something was, else. Uh, well, it was at DreamHack. DreamHack. That's it. That's the word I was looking yeah, for. And that was. Okay. That was fantastic yeah. because one, I saw, I saw some of your Twitter photos and stuff like that. There. Sorry. <laughs> I, I, I saw some of my bosses there from other gigs. <laughs> so wow. it, it was actually kind of cool because they're like, hey, what's up? I didn't know you'd be here. I'm like, I didn't know you'd be here. <laughs> you were saying that to me, weren't you? You say that's a part of being a, you know, to get out there with your casting is to get out there and mingle with people at these events, isn't it? I've been in four, I can't, unfortunately, I'm not in the States. It's not as easy for me to do that. But for the people that are, if, if they can, right, that's the way, you, as you said, you're meeting your bosses and I, I think, didn't expect them to be there. I, I tr And this is more hunch than anything else. Like, I, I can't provide you proven, you know, fact to paper, but it feels, just from my personal experience, that more contacts that I make through those live events lead to jobs than any other thing that I do because not only are they they are not only are they looking at the way that I bring a certain product they're looking at the way I conduct myself and I, I try to be extremely consistent with the way that I do things I, I was outside of a light up cowboy hat <laughs> I was pretty decked out during dream act uh, I'm pretty sure I was one of maybe a handful of people who are there dressed up in a suit jacket with a collared shirt, you know, and slacks each and every day that I was there. So I, I was dressed to one, enjoy myself, but I was also having a little bit of fun and being super professional all at the same time. So the, the amount of recognition I got for it in that process. So yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. You were dressed, dressed up in pro and <laughs> the, the trademark uh, glasses on, of course. Which is a great rep, yeah, you know, the great uh, marketing thing you have now. Which, as you said, that was just an accident, wasn't it? It was just like it, it had, was. It was completely accidental. Like, <laughs> yeah, like you go back quite a long ways, and it, it it never it was never really a thing. But Theris Bex truly did help what I do in myself, due in part to the fact that I I was able to not have headaches five days out of the seven. Hey, Flare XD, how are you doing? Uh, we don't usually do too much chat interaction, but uh, welcome to the stream. Uh, first time chat, uh, I do appreciate you. Uh, right now we're doing a casting workshop and, and talking about, uh, specifically, we're, we're doing a little bit of uh, <laughs> talking about tonality. And I'm using Maxime Vengaroff, a, a professional violinist, going through some teaching uh, as a perfect example of how a minuscule and minute changes in your tone of voice, or in this case, the tone of a violin, uh, can change the feel overall of the thing that is said or the thing that is played. Without... Of course, it's in a different language, but... So... It... It actually has subtitles, mate. I'm going to click on them. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Change it to English. <laughs> I knew it was in German. Wait a minute. Oh, that translates. See if that works. To Australian. Only to Australian. Australian. <laughs> 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 no, you got English there. Go for it. I heard it's got oh. Irish. <laughs> Wait, a minute. Scottish. Wait a minute. Yiddish. Unknown language. <laughs> oh my goodness. There we go. So, 
I never actually thought about that. So, uh, you don't watch many translated movies, do you? Or maybe not on, on YouTube. I translate stuff on YouTube. So, so I, I, I love the difference between what she does right here. Just this little bit and then listen to the moment he, he touches Bo to violin. You play with the body language. Hmm? Yeah, violin's body, isn't it? It's like lead, lead, you know, famous lead guitarists, aren't they the same? Like the way they, <laughs> they, they play with, like you look at Santana, the way he plays guitar. Oh, okay, it's that's a perfect like that. example. It's so extremely good. <laughs> she 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 can play. She's just hard at having a hard time acting and playing. That's what it is, isn't that? The emotional, yeah. And so she's learning. Bravo. She's moving her body too much, I would say, right? And not staying still and moving her hips and shoulders and stuff on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love that you even noticed that beforehand. A uh, lot of theatre, my friend. A lot of theatre. Trust me, you're going to meet the theatre director soon. She's going to tell you about all that. <laughs> yes. Uh, there was a, there's also a movie called uh, um, 19 something. It's a mm -hmm. piano playing movie. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll find it in a second. And that's also one of those movies where he plays the piano dramatic and it's a, it's a piano off in that movie as well too. Yeah. It's Legends of 1900. I can't remember what it was. It's a, it bought a ship. I'll, um, I'll try to find that um, that scene for you. But that's, <laughs> that's a dramatic very dramatic scene. I can't remember that movie. It's cool, actually. Uh, uh, my, um, one of my favorite things about this whole entire video, and it's 37 minutes of gold. <laughs> like, like, we're only looking at a very specific, small part of it. But, like, just towards the tail end uh, of what we just heard, the way he's able to amp up the volume with so little body movement <laughs> is, is brilliant. So it's like it, uh, yeah. becoming becoming effortless in your. It, I, I would liken it to becoming effortless in your hype, and hype not meaning volume. So it's like yes. it, it, the volume in this case of the violin does not necessarily mean that you are going so far out of bounds with your movement that it becomes a disruption. It, it's more about the conduct of it so uh, conduct i don't know that that's the right word but I, I i in my mind i know what i'm trying to say <laughs> anywho yeah i know what you mean let's see here. Uh, um, 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 um oh the piano the piano thing is is this one i'll send you the link but just post in the workshop link uh, do we have a, a this this may end up going from a marbles on stream community day yeah. to just talking well, about that, that piano duel was forth. pretty good that's legend of 1900 that was a pretty good one i was thinking about the duel but i can't remember this guy called barry something that's it barry uh, uh uh barry morgan and his organ that's right this guy uh uh we're gonna we're gonna believe <laughs> what do we got here this this, this, this oh now Anyway, that's just a movie scene. You can watch that one later. Have a look at this character. Have a look at this character. Way he plays the uh, 
Wait, this guy plays the organ <laughs> for character. Oh my. Barry Morgan. <laughs> I don't yeah. even know what happened with this guy. He's from Australia. Look, yeah, this is man's, um, look at that man's face. Yeah. That alone. The, this facial oh, character, the way he does whoa! it. Whoa! Yeah. Whoa! My guy's not wearing any pants! Don't look, kids! Turn away! Pants. He's pretty sure he's wearing pants. Oh, hey, never mind. Never mind. Okay, he's, I, I can see. I can see. Of course, I'm excited. Yeah, he's wearing pants. I'm here with my two best friends. Hang yeah, on, I'm going to put you on the speaker. I'm just saying, that's borderline a onesie right there. <laughs> We're just talking about Barry. Hang on. Aurora Classic. And of course, Cooker. Say hello to Cooker. Cook, 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 cook. Oh, Aurora's in there with a the bossa nova. Now, you've asked me about requests. Well, of course, I've got a request for you, too. But we'll get to those later. You've asked me, you say, Barry, do you do the girl from Ipanema? My goodness. And I said, yes, quite regularly. And I'm going to do her for you this afternoon. So let's just get a little string going as an introduction. Now we're warming up. See his people. character. That's right. Oh, I listen to that beautiful big bottom end. All right, here we go. So let's just try a little of the girl from Ipanema. We're going to do a drum fill. Oh. Come on, here we go. Take a seat. Now Uh, uh, yeah, about characters and this violin guy that well, sorry this is uh ingrid i'm gonna let you to meet ingrid she's gonna be on the on the we're well, sharing the same microphone uh, this, this man right here he is his own bobblehead that's amazing yeah <laughs> yes he is a bobblehead and his head is bobbling and mostly his hands twitching so he's he belongs right here what's what's your name darling uh, my name's ken oh it's, How are you doing? That's kind of there. This is the late bit where you can see. But... Oh, I see you now. Okay. I got to figure out which monitor he wants me to look at. <laughs> uh, this will be the live one that he's sharing the video. That's the Twitch. That's delayed. <laughs> this is Kendo. Kendo's uh, uh, been around the block a few times, hasn't he, with, with uh, casting and stuff like that. And as I said, Kendo, Ingrid's my mentor. She's the one that's taught me a lot of her. What, can you explain your whole experience that you've done? I don't yeah. know. I don't know that he's necessarily interested in it, but it's <laughs> nice to meet you. And it sounds like we're in a similar industry. Uh, I, I would I would agree to a point. Uh, if all-encompassing entertainment is the industry, then 100%. But you are far more developed in, in what you do oh, than honey, I am. Oh, honey, you've seen me in the bathroom? Are you sure? No, uh -huh. no. What oh, kind no. of developed are you talking about? <laughs> Oh, uh, by uh, by that I mean uh, far more uh, experienced, perhaps. Experienced? <laughs> How do you know that? Oh either? no! Oh no! Oh, my God. goodness! Too, he slams me too. Do, do you see where I get the puns from, my friend? I see. I see. I I see. Oh, my goodness! I'm just amazed. I've hardly talked to you thirty seconds, and I'm... already he's come on to me twice, and he's kind of flirted oh, with me. Oh, had such innuendos. He's a married man, Bob. Sorry. Doesn't know oh, married man. That's why he's uh, coming that's, on that's, to me. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> married men always do that. Don't tell my but wife. Depending on what their wife looks like. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, what did I walk but, uh, into? I, I don't yeah, know what you walked in. into, Grant, uh, but I will say that it is mildly entertaining. <laughs> oh, I'm so pleased you said the word mildly. <gasps> I, uh, may I ask why? <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. You're picking your line pickup is yes. a little too slow. You got to jump on those cues, pal. No, that is Wait, true. You mean your pickup line? Oh, oh no, yes. No. I, you Again, know, he's I, I'm trying. I'm trying to get away from that, Grant. Please. Oh. Well, you know what they say. <laughs> oh boy. All right, I'm getting the screens explained to me because I only have two screens in this mother oh, she, effort. She's going to do marbles on stream, I guess, if you do it. If you're going to give her any casting exercises, my friend, you want to see how she would go at that? This is what she does to me, uh, teaches me. But um, anyway, yeah. Yeah, it's been a few years since I made a living doing voiceovers, but um, definitely doing improv. You have to. You have to practice improv. People say, oh, no, no, you don't have to practice. That's a lot of BS. The only way you're going to get the juices working, it's like any other muscle. You have to exercise it. You have to stretch it and try to make it larger each and every day. Yeah. Kind of like what most guys do in their pants. But because of oh, that, I you knew that was coming. <laughs>
literally. <laughs> if it was coming, you better unpa- you know, you're gonna need a little tissue over there. Can I pass she, in a tissue? Yeah, you Holy can. Mother. She she's casted. She she's cast. She's uh uh. We, you've done an imp- you've directed improv shows and the cabaret shows and all that. She got me on stage for the first Wait, time, man. After ten Diggles, years. Who, yeah. who is this? I missed the introduction. Uh, you know, Hi, my name is Ingrid. Um, uh, I'm a friend of Biggles, and I was a professional actress for about 25 years in New York City. I've done live work, stage work, film work, voiceover, films, TV, yeah. stage, cabaret, you name it. So, That's awesome. um, you even worked at a um, what? What do you remember? Well, oh, dear God, don't tell me. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> Working at a drive in porn movie theater is not the same as working in the industry (laughs) just because i took their ticket and stamped their well stamped their ticket you know and tried to yank their ticket but after they gave me money sometimes you know it was really scary because these guys would drive up in these really fancy cars like a lincoln continental and he had his hair all parted funny and his pants kind of loose and he would pay me with quarters I'm like, what do you pay? And then I heard this muffled. (laughs) Seems that he had someone in the trunk that he was bringing into the porno movie. So these kinds of things happened all the time. It was the Greek mafia back in those days in Dayton, Ohio. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, um, that's the only industry I worked at and not in. Mm hmm. Wow. Let's jump right in, boys. Go ahead. It it, it sounded a little bit like a scene out of Back to the Future there for a moment. Oh, it could have been. Uh, it could very much be. Are you driving a DeLorean? Is that why you suggest that? Uh, no, by no means. I, I am far unsophisticated when it comes to that much metal. Uh, oh, honey, you should see the metal I have. Metal turgy everywhere. Mm. Can you put your cam on in the casting room so we can see it so it's not so delayed? <laughs> She's not you used to all this Sorry, stuff. Sorry, the, tur- the, the metal turgy got you a little bit? see here no 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 you know why you know why guys like girls with piercings on their tongue we all know why the same reason why we like boys with pierced ears gives us something to grab onto and stick our fingers through the hole and give a good old yank yeah it doesn't take long to go to the gutter (laughs) (laughs) who said who said all guys like that all right so um well tell me one guy who doesn't like to have a girl's tongue um pierced they still well, this is supposed to be a casting workshop. I, I, yeah, I, I, it's I, a I, casting I, workshop. Yes. Oh, I'm so sorry. Should I be teaching? No, oh, no, sorry. no. no. The teacher, the teacher. Oh, you're teacher. teaching. I'm so sorry. He's the teacher. You let me know when you start doing that, okay? <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I don't know that I'm going to start doing that for another hour or so. <laughs> Because at the rate I'm going, I, I, who knows? This may end up being another two and a half hours uh, just sitting here and conversing. Well, um, now in your workshop, do you provide your students with typical uh, tongue twisters, warm ups, breathing exercises, no. uh, things like that? Uh, improv cl- um, games that you can play to kind of warm up their imagination? No, not usually. In fact, you almost would. But he needs you some. almost would say he that needs some. I. I could see that being something that I desperately need. <laughs> well, let's I talk want about improv one... games and strategies because I'm bad at it. All right, let me give you an improv game that we're going to play, okay? Break this down, it's Kendall. very simple. Uh, we'll, um, let me make sure I have everybody's name right. Uh, it's Kendo. And then... Who's the other one over here? Kendo Grant. and... Grant. Grant. And may I call you Grant? Granto? Yes. Or Granto. <laughs> Grant. Grant. All right. No, we're... not, not Granto. <laughs> Granto and Kendo, Kendo oh, baby, I feel like I've got, okay. So here's the exercise. It's, wait, wait, can you get your microphone, your camera on, Kendo, in, in the Discord? Uh, no. Just like you just want a regular camera on? Yeah, yeah, your camera that you have, like, on the Twitch, because it's delayed otherwise. And uh, Let's see here. Tech stuff. Uh, so much. Freak you. Uh, not Discord. Tech. Not this kind of tech stuff. Yeah. Just think so it's going to be so harder here, if you can't yeah, see. No, that's not going to work. <laughs> That's hilarious. That is that is the other camera. There we go. So aha, aha. So don't 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 mind me. That now you have a a much more. How do we get that bigger? Much more. Okay. I don't see Kendo sitting very often. This is like first, I think. Very rare. (laughs) This is a very simple and um, exercise that will start one person at a time. It's called "What's in the Box." 
And how you play it is that you're having a box, you sit it on your lap, and you're going to pull different things out of it and speak about it. But you can't pull out themes. So, for example, I can't say beach towel, sand, um, things that are beach and or related. I have to move along. I have to say beach, skyscraper, pot, camera, fixed television, things like that. They have to be totally non sequiturs. So as soon as you start repeating something or have too long of a delay, I will call time and okay. then we'll move to the next person and that person will do it. There's no right. There's no wrong. It's an exercise in order to warm up your improv skill. Okay. You got to beep if you need it. Okay. Just press that. All that right. Your beep up. That's my, oh honey, I got a beep. I yeah. thought it was going to be more like a nipple. Okay. No, okay. So. Um, here's how, um, I'll tell you what, I'll start a little bit just to give you an idea. Okay. I have a beep too. Um, here is my, oops. he's got a beep too. Oh, baby. All right. Here's my box from my box, toothbrush, mouse, camera, air conditioner, horse, table, tire, shoe. See how none of them are related. Yes. I'm pulling them out of the box. Now, the minute I would start saying shoe, shoelaces, socks. That's things that are too relative at too close and you would be buzzed. Okay. Okay. And, and it's not a race. So you can go at your own pace. Once you develop a rhythm, you're going to find how your brain starts to change. Okay. Any questions? No, no I, I, I fear failure, but all, at the same time, might. failure There's is no also failure. advancement. No, there's no failure in this because it's it's an exercise. You can walk, you can sit, you can run, you can practice yeah. breathing. This is the same thing. So please, let me know when you're ready. Uh, I am as ready as I will ever be, Grant. Show me the box sitting in front of you. Oh. I need you to see it, baby. Show okay. me your box. Okay. okay, and open your box and then tell me what's in the box. Richard Simmons. And pull it out. <laughs> Richard Simmons. Uh, oh, uh, do I do I keep on going? Okay. Yes, yeah, so but there's yeah, never going to be a, a Richard Simmons with a box in it or a box in Richard Simmons. Those uh, girls just won't touch him. Okay, well, I, you know. Hey, you don't know what he's into. I, I, I know he's not into girls. <laughs> okay, okay. So uh, let's see here. Let's let's put that box to the side. Uh, slide it a little bit further over there. And we'll pull, pull this box over here. Uh, let's see here. Oh my. Oh my. Uh, notepad. Chevy Silverado. Green eggs and ham. A baseball cap. Dresser drawer? Uh, car tire. Okay, now speed it up just a little bit. The sun. Oh. <laughs> uh, no, I was about to say the stars. Oh, go figure. No, no, but okay. those will be involved. There, right. there, there we go. Okay. Let's take a break. Okay, so yeah. what were your observations on how that felt? Uh, like I was saying random things so far off spectrum from each other that it was... <laughs> <laughs> that it was borderline absurd. And exactly. most of which did not fit in a box. And as well, they shouldn't. When you pull out the universe, the planet Earth, you pull out a dog, you pull out a, these things. The objective is that you, you let your mind go so that when you're improv you don't let your mind stop you from thinking things because you're in a rut or a routine. This allows you to start to expand what your mind can go so there's no limitations. All right. Mm. So, Grant, would you like to give it a try? Oh dear heavens! Uh, I can give it. I can give it a go. Yeah, let's let's do that. So let's remember: you're going to set the box on your lap, and you're going to pull uh -huh. it out, and you're going to say a baseball cap, a mouse, a telephone, glass of wine, you know, whatever comes into your mind. If you repeat or get into a rut, I'll stop you, and we'll start again. Okay? <gasps> all right, all right. I can do. I can do this. Why was so? I've never been so intimidated before by a box. <laughs> all right. You haven't seen mine then. She has teeth. <laughs> I'm, there, there you go. Laughter and breathing and laughter. That'll help release some of that tension. Okay, give it a go, my dear. Yeah. All right. 
LED strip is in my box. A drumstick. Ice cream sandwich. A chicken. A human leg. Okay, you did drumstick, chicken, and human leg. That's kind of three leg mm. things. Let's move on to another topic. Uh, Keep going. Like KFC. Like a instrument. Uh, but yes, um, a gold bar, street corner. That seems oddly large to fit in my box, but it's there. A sock, drywall, a cloud. A baseball, a steel cage, a welcome mat, a tree leaf, a computer mouse. Okay, very nice. So tell me about your experience. How did that make you feel? <laughs> Uh, I realized how much I limit myself to themes. Uh, it was it was very hard, but I was like trying to. Uh, I I feel like I just try to transport myself to the most random location possible, and then think what item would be there, and then teleport to a new location. Oh, very uh, so nice. Was, Love the very, metaphor. <laughs> it's very so very it, weird. The next step then would be to speed it up a little bit and yeah. to see if you can, if your brain or your mouth can keep up, which one is faster, your brain <laughs> or your mouth. And that is an exercise that even though people say you don't rehearse improv, this is an improv exercise because you'll, you'll, it'll never be the same. You'll never repeat it exactly the same. Yeah. Okay. So that's one exercise. Question. Okay. The other one would be, let's put each other in order. Um, uh, Kendo, you be number one. Granto, okay. you be number two. And I, Ingrid will be number three. We're going to play a game called One Word at a Time. What we're going to do uh, is tell a story, and each one of us is going to say one word at a time. And we're going to go in order with Kendo, Grant, me, Kendo, Grant, me, Kendo, Grant, me. And we'll say one word at a time. And we're going to tell a story together. Beautiful. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. There. There. Once. Was. A. Man. Called. Bob. Bob. Who. Ate. A. A. Doorknob. After. Brushing. His. Doorknob. <laughs> he. he Noticed his leg was large, but he wanted a bigger, smaller, suppler. Why do you know what word you said, Kendo? <laughs> Good word, Kendo. Very word. nice. Oh, Run that flow. So very nice. Wait, wait. Bigger, <laughs> bigger, definition. smaller. Well, we, 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 we went contradictory for a second. So Absolutely. that opened up the possibility of giving one more descriptor. It, it added absurdity to it all as well. So I didn't even know what the word meant. I was just like, how to make sense of this question? <laughs> for some, it was very nice. For something to be supple, it, it, it would be... Uh, it, it, uh, you really, know? Well, no, no, I'm, I'm trying to, I, I, I'm trying I'm to trying think, not of, it to in think the way. of things that I know that are supple. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, 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 supple would be uh, something that was not overstated. Mm. So it, it would be a bigger yet smaller, not a uh, non overstated leg. <laughs> so, <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> so, <laughs> so basically. <laughs> Our, our friend Bob has a, a very large problem with the uh, his... overanalyzation of his leg. Absolutely. 
So again, this is an exercise that you can practice with a minimum of three people so that you can see how you can guide the conversa conversation. Yeah. The other one is, yes, please. Ooh. You can never oh. say no. <laughs> oh, you can never say no. So you're like, this do you want to go eat shit? And you, someone would say, yes. And I, so you, you must say yes and. And then after oh, that, boy. then we're going to play question with a question. This I, this feels like a trap. A, <laughs> a, 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 what do you call it? Say a, a, a workshop. Improv, improv, improv workshop. But anyway, but it's you also, don't mind this, do you, Kenda? I don't mind this at all because yeah. improv yeah. is a is a subject that we haven't really covered very much at all. It's not a strong suit of mine whatsoever as far as no shit practiced. i'm sorry <laughs> is that a little too rude too fast no you're fine oh, okay you have thick skin right i just remember the most part i don't okay, know good. i don't know how my bosses how, how thick the skin of my bosses will be but <laughs> well tell them you're very kind and i'll be very i'll give you four stars when we're done okay okay yeah perfect okay um so we can um this is yes and so you can never say no and then after that, we'll do uh, answer a question with a question. So, okay. um, since um, uh, Grant, you want to go first this time? Uh, yes. So I ask a question. Well, right. That's two separate games. Um, oh. It's something like, do you want to go do something? Oh. Or do you want to eat? Come with me. At, that is a question. Is yes. No. <laughs> We're not. Yeah, we're doing yes. Yes. No. Yes. And. So the, yes and so the first. So the. Okay. Does, is it is this a two person game? It's it could be three person. All three. Players. We'll go in the order: Grant, me, and then Keno. So we kind of keep that counterclockwise shit going for me. Okay. All right. Huh. Do you want to go and drive a Chevy Camaro? Yes, and I want to take the top down. Hey, Keno, do you want to come and ride in the trunk? Why, yes, please. I love the trunk. Uh, but can we actually make no sure buts. there's... No, nope. no, no, excuse buts. me. No buts. Wait, where's the not, not enough. Not, it, I'm sorry. I grew up a lot of butts in my family. Uh, oh, my goodness. Anyway. But a bunch. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Not again. It's right. Here. Anyway. That's fine. It's again. It's and yes. You cannot, oh, you yeah. cannot say no, and you cannot say but. Everything yeah. has to be and yes. So you have to move everything forward. <laughs> okay. Positive, negative. You have to move it forward. All right. Now you get to start since you erred. Okay. So yeah, yes, please. And let's make sure we put an air conditioning yep. unit in the drone. No, it's, it's still allowed to be a question. Uh... Doesn't have to be a question. This doesn't have to be a question. But you want to engage your partner. Okay. Hmm. Hey, Grant, would yeah. you like to go to Build-A-Bear Workshop? I would love to go to Build-A-Bear Workshop and make a stuffed bunny. <gasps> Ooh. Would you... <laughs> it's, it's Ingrid, right? It's Ingrid, yes, please. Hey, Ingrid, would you like to make a stuffed bear as well? Yes, I would love to stuff a bear with a big old cucumber. Kenna, would you like to stuff a bear? Why, I would Why love I to stuff a bear. In bear. fact, Grant, do you think we should stuff that bear with a salad? Yes, I absolutely think we should stuff it with a okay, salad. Okay, okay. And afterwards, would you like to go to Auntie Anne's Pretzels, Ingrid? Auntie Anne's pretzels, yes! I love it how she puts too much salt on everything. It's wonderful. How that, um, uh, Kendo, do you like salt on your pretzel? Uh, it's one of my favorite things in the world. Yes, please. And let me tell you, one of my favorite things also is... Oh my gosh, I'm just talking. <laughs> Engage your teammate. Interesting. 
All right, let's put a pause on this one for yeah, a second. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So this is something you can, and usually the way you play this in particular improv is it's on a stage, and one person is on the stage, and a person enters into the stage to have a conversation with that person. The minute somebody either says but or changes and to a negative or says no, oh, yeah. they go out they and another out. person comes in. Yeah. Exactly. Now, the next one is answer with a question. And this is hard. Every, you, if I, we're going to have a conversation and I must answer with a question, you must answer with a question, we must all work in questions. And the minute we don't answer in a question, we get buzzed out. So let's do the two of you and I'll be on the buzzer. So uh, Kendo and Grant, um, Grant, why don't you start and ask Kendo a question? And he has to answer in a question and then you back and forth. So you need to have a conversation in questions and begin. <laughs> you can't like say which word? They can. They, oh. It just oh. has to be a question. Just has to be a question. Kendall, do you like beach balls? Do you think the beach balls will have oh. air in them? Do you think they'd be filled with ketchup? Do you think Tom Brady's Tom in the Brady? area? Do you think Peyton Manning has ever won a Super Bowl? Do you think Peyton Manning looks a little bit like he has ketchup on his head? Do you think he'd look really good in a suit and tie? Do you think that it's really a good time, yeah, for, a good steak? time for steak? Try getting away from do you think. Try another question. Mm. <laughs> Are we sure about the socioeconomic crisis in America? Have you heard about the push for women's right in Haitian countries? Sorry, my phone is going off and I have no idea where from. Okay. <laughs> Include that in here. Thing. Pause. Yeah. Pause button. Okay. Pause, pause button. Pause button. Oh, well, you're going to pour me a drinky, drinky boo? Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's a good start. <laughs> you're gonna First have, time. This make it a double. <laughs> oh, it's just Triple. it's red it's a, wine, baby. It's red, red wine. So, um, you guys got caught in do in a do you think? Do you do think? You and that think. became. Repetitive. I was like answering him sarcastically, you know. It's like, and that's it's part gonna, of the beauty. Yeah, that's perfect. Yes, of course, sarcasm, fun, hatred. Do you really like soft toothpaste? It's all up into how you want to deliver something. And being sarcastic is fine. The hope is that your partner in the improv will play off that sarcasm and ask you another question back. Trying yeah. to stay in topic instead of going back to what's in the box where you have non sequiturs. Actually yeah. engage in your, is that a black headdress behind you, Kendo? Ooh. <laughs> you might. It's just happy to see me. <laughs> You might not believe that it's a Boom, raccoon. That's yeah. that that's is a statement, terrible. not a question. <laughs> you might not believe it. Do you always move your tongue she... that fast? No. <laughs> <laughs> she's good. She's mean to me. When she gives me notes, she doesn't go, yeah, you're good. You can cast this and cast that. No, she gives me like a thousand notes. You need to breathe more. You need to stop slurring. You need to slow down. All this sort of stuff. This is why I love the the casting that I get from. Well, the the you know the advice. Yep. Well, that I get from you. I'm. I don't. You know, your friends are going to compliment you. Your mother's going to say you're wonderful. You don't hire a coach to stroke your your ego. You hire a coach to make you better. Yeah. And when Ugh. you do something correctly, yes, fine. You should be rewarded for it, or at least acknowledge it, so that you can put that in your bag and of tricks and say, okay, this worked for me. Let me keep that in case I need that in the future. But if you don't have someone who's given you honest criticism and or teaching you how to better your skills either in an improv and or casting, which are basically the same because you have no way of knowing on a race, in a car, what's going to happen. You know, okay, somebody's going to pass the other person. There are certain generalities that you're familiar with. But in that right moment, if you are mindful and in the moment, your casting should be as well. And if you don't have the words or the vocabulary or the ability to make full sentence structures, then maybe casting isn't it for you. Maybe mm -hmm. something else is. Well, it is for Kendo. Yeah, I actually wanted to ask you a question, Kendo. Like, 
because you're doing all the casting workshops and you're, you know, obviously a brilliant caster and I learned a lot from you. What is, and once again, you know, because I have uh, Ingrid here that, you know, is an expert and she's been around the block. Is there, is there anything that you find in your casting per se that you want, you need to, would like to work on or whatever that you could have her perhaps? We don't know. We don't have her here very often, so I don't know if you wanted to ask her any questions or something. I hope I haven't Sorry. offended it's, him. No, no, it's Kendo's no, work. No, no. It's his workshop. I don't want to offend him. No, you're not. No. I don't think you offended him. Well, I mean, it, in all honesty, where I am currently in my own game, <laughs> I, I've gotten to a point where I am broken enough on my own confidence level that <laughs> I. I I'm bumbling here because I, I think I've lost touch with what originally made me me. So th this is kind of a good thing in, in a way, but it also just shows me, hey, this is why you suck at the same time. No, no, please don't go there. It's not why you suck, honey. Well, yeah. There's other reasons why uh, you it would, suck. It, it would be, it would be a rock. Okay, it, it's, it's a Rocket League terminology. <laughs> okay, <laughs> like there, yeah, right. there's, there is literally a YouTuber who literally goes through a, the gameplay and it's like this is why you suck so it, it okay it's all not necessarily a de facto statement that i'm making but understandably i don't have enough experience with race car racing and, yeah. and this kind of commentating what i'm trying to help you do is have a an eloquent presence use your diction use your breathing try to tap into your imagination so you're not limited by the nomenclature that you've been using in your past broadcasts mm -hmm. um Dean was saying that he was using Yowzer a lot in another thing and asking a specific no, um i was using kerfuffling, kerfuffling so a lot yes kerfuffling and so, so. So, and a few rep repetitive words. Some repetitive words. Mm. To a point, you can use that, but if you become overzealous in those words, then maybe a selection and trying to pair that or at least try to find new synonyms and stretch your vocabulary and stretch your interest with your viewers because they've heard that. Well, can, can, can you, she hasn't, I mean, she's come in, she, has, she hasn't heard your casting before, mate, of Rocket League. Do you have any examples you'd like to show or something? <laughs> I don't know if you want. Uh, that, so she can listen to it or, or something and I don't know. I mean, that, or or, or that goes, perhaps just Grant? I don't know. We might be able I haven't to cast it for so long. That That is the issue for me currently as well. It's gotten to a point where I, I even put up on Twitter <laughs> trying to pick you up back off of someone's idea. I I do believe that I am out of date with my own personal commentary, and I've only done two gigs in the past, uh, let's see, three months. So I believe I'm a very bad example of this. Right Wait, now. I did one with you, my friend, remember? That was a lot of fun. Yeah. He taught, you taught me a lot on that one. I was throwing puns at you <laughs> tooth and nail, and you came back like tenfold. I was like, yeah. Well, that's better. also depending yeah. on what is the premise of the conversation that you're sharing with your online listeners. Mm -hmm. Are you looking to have a battle back and forth of wit? Are you looking to actually relay the information that's happening yeah. in front of you with some sort of race, with some, si some sort of entertainment value? Mm -hmm. If you're just trying to out-pun each other, go play in the backyard and wank off together. But if you're trying to do something with the casting and elevate it to a different level, what is that level you're trying to go she to? She hasn't seen Rocket League, so you should show her an example. I've seen first. the um, uh, taxis, the cars hitting the uh, soccer ball. Yeah, that one. Yeah, I've seen That's that. That's the one, yeah. <laughs> but it's Wait, fast let me go furious. get my bong. This is, this is going to go. Yeah, edibles. I didn't bring edibles. Yeah, I get edibles. Did you have anything to show, Kendo? I don't know. It's just so you could see it. I mean, once again, she's not usually in here. I dragged her in here because uh, we're usually casting, so I, yeah, you're I'm usually happy casting, to, so. to have you chat. And uh, she's my coach, <laughs> and she's smoking a bowl yeah, right now. <laughs> you really want to open up those chests? Make sure you nail really deep. <laughs> yeah. You you didn't tell me we could do that more in fucking cabaret, can't we? Yeah, right? hell no! <laughs> on stage. Actually, Dean had never performed on stage, and we developed this show that was called Cabaret Caliente, and it was basically a vignette, or very much like the Carol Burnett show, or uh, it's a musical <laughs> interlude, a, a bunch of different skits just nailed together for no apparent reason, and fun costumes. We made sure that the girls had very little clothing on, or if they did, they didn't keep it on for long. And Dean played the devil. And 
he had been talking the year before about doing something. We had tried to put him in then and he wouldn't do it. So this year he said, okay, you know what? I found a monologue I think I want to do. And it was a, this, the devil. And it was brilliant. And we worked with him. Uh, he had never been on stage before. He didn't have a voice strong enough to project. Mm -hmm. We put a, uh, uh, not a thermometer, but some sort of sound meter in the back of the theater. And his job was to make sure that that sound meter resonated at 110 to 115. If he didn't reach that, we'd go back and do it again. Decibels, yes. Decibels. So we made sure that because we wanted to make sure that every person in that theater, right now, including the back row, high. could hear him and that he enunciated clearly enough that it wasn't distorted and that he didn't need a microphone. So we started with those kinds of exercises to build up his strength, his stamina, his breathing, his diction. And then we had to work on his humor because that, as you well know, has a Go. bit of a problem. No, um, he's very quick witted. Projection. And, yeah, projection was hard for you and staying on um, script. And occasionally, as you all well know, if you've ever done stand up comedy and uh, People are going to heckle you from the house. Mm. It doesn't matter if you're in a comedy club or if you're in a theater and you're doing a monologue. People are going to, you know, they, they think they're in the movies and they're going to clap and go cheer and go, yeah, busy time cruise. You know, they're going to do all these different things and he needed to be prepared for that. So we started yelling things at him, not yelling, kindly saying things to him for a while to throw him off game so that he would practice his concentration, his diction. So he had all these things that he had to practice to get ready to, in order to deliver this monologue that was quite humorous. He eventually got so good at it that he could go offline or off topic or off script, as you may say, and still bring it back and bring it back to a nice humor and entertaining the people. Um, he became very good at that. And I believe that kind of got him uh, the confidence. He grew in confidence in order to do what he's doing now with the broadcasting. Absolutely. And I just want to make sure that anybody who wants to do it and do it correctly practices breathing, practices diction, practices eloquence, and trying to frame sentences. And the only way you're going to do that is when you play off of each other, saying, okay, let's play this game. Uh, one word at a time, I ask you a question, it's pulling things out of the box. If you're not vulnerable enough to be open to all those things, it's going to make it more difficult for you. If you're all of a sudden there's a giant crash on the screen and you're like, oh. well, you guys are with cartoons, so nobody like bleeds out, right? They're pride. <laughs> They're, They're pride, but nobody actually crashes and bleeds out in a car crash. No, not usually. But the flow. The flow, and you've explained this before, haven't you, Kendo? It's the flow between the casters. Yeah. And when you get new casters, as we know, like they're a little shy and mainly uh, they call it color casters. And what's the other one called on, uh, online? Play by play. Color, play by play and color, and color okay. casting. So, and so, but then again, you sometimes you have two. Like I think you and I, when we casted together, Kendo, we were pretty much, what do you call it? Play by play each or color casting each. I don't think we were really, <laughs> there was no lead in, there, there are, there, I, I yeah. would say we call that hybrid, although hybrid, there, there, okay. there are many different avenues of the thought process that is hybrid. I... What are the different yes. processes? Here is where you can actually, please, help me in your workshop. Tell me the different types of casting in your field. Well, play-by-play -play is exactly what you'd expect, and a lot of the time it, it's stated in its name. Uh, a lot of the time people will look at play-by-play -play from the prospect of radio because more often than not, the commentators who make it are given radio opportunities rather than television opportunities where you're going to actually see what's going on. So a radio play-by-play -play is someone who is going through each and every single minuscule moment and trying to describe it to the best of their abilities uh, keeping to as true a painting of the picture that they're seeing before them. That way, those who do not have literal eyes on the pitch or the, wherever the game is being played can at least visualize what is going on. Uh, very nice description. Mm -hmm. uh, that you're, that's very clear to me. Yeah. Uh, somebody who, who would do more play-by-play -play of 
Howard Cosell was a play-by-play. -play. Yeah. And especially when he was broadcasting with or without the toupee. All right, what is the, um, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, <laughs> so sec more, more of the secondary style would be television style play-by-play, -play, where you, yeah. you take a little bit more of the mentality of a narrator at, at mm -hmm. that point. It, it, you're not, you don't need to do every single moment's play because of the fact everyone has eyes, the usually the same and similar eyes that you have on the game that is before you, that you're talking about. So mm -hmm. you become a little bit more about navigating the themes of the game. Like maybe perhaps we're, we're going to start talking about, well, this ball is going to be traveling into the defensive corner for the rhinos. We'll just give a random team name based after an animal. And the rhinos are going to be forced onto the defensive foot. They will, however, find this ball in the corner, get the clear on through. They do have an attempt towards the middle of the field. A shot on will score. And that it would be a play-by-play -play call with the idea of you can see what's going on. Now, can you do that again, only this time sit up straight and breathe from your diaphragm? <laughs> I, because I love you it. started squeezing the words out towards the end of your sentence, almost well, yeah. like you were having a bowel movement. Well, yeah, okay. I, I, I was very much leaning over. <laughs> yes, you were. So but I, if you can sit back I, I and maybe... I, I was by no means in proper confines, but yes, I, I can do that in a much more uh, proper tone. Because I... You have a very nice tone. You have a very nice cadence. Mm -hmm. You have a nice execution of the diction. However, I found you losing your air at the end of sentences. Yeah, I think he was yeah. Doesn't matter if he's not trying. If it, it's going to come out, it's going to ooze out of his blood at some point because it should be natural. It's not something that you're like, oh, I'm going to cast now and have this fucking I heard the casting energy voice. Coming through. I hear it. it's, it's, it's something that it should happen automatically. I enjoy watching him cast. <laughs> All right. Really Give it a tr tell me again how the rhinos hit the ball into the right. corner. That first goal has already gone by, so we don't want to look at the past. We're going to look toward the future, and right now, with the rhinos having that one goal lead, the kickoff going in their favor, they are going to track this ball all the way into the corner. Far top, it'll be down from the ceiling, but a clear will come across, and this ball... Come across was out of air. You were almost out of air. Mm -hmm. So... Do you feel like you are out of air? Not exactly. All right. Can I? May I ask you to stand up and breathe and let me watch you breathe? <laughs> ah, okay. I need to see the physical. I push the chair back and go stand where the chair is. I need to get some distance between. <laughs> there you go. All right. Okay. All right. Put your hand on your diaphragm. Your diaphragm, honey, is not your heart. <laughs> it's closer to your balls, okay? <laughs> About where your waistline... Okay, okay. Now drop your shoulders. Drop the shoulders. Keep your hand on your diaphragm. All right. Now, um, I want you to uh, count to 20 and take a nice deep breath and show me how you count to 20. One. Your chest breathing. Okay. Two. All right. We have a little... We already started a problem. Stop. Okay. <laughs> All right, you're you're breathing how what we call chest breathing, okay. where your beautiful little uh, logo is uh, on your chest. That's your chest, and where you have your hand is called your diaphragm. Now, I want you to try to think about when you breathe. You feel the literal glass of water from the bottom to the top. The way I'm seeing you breathe right now is you're breathing from the top down. So you're filling the glass of water in your chest first, and none of it's getting down into your diaphragm. Now, if you don't get it in your diaphragm, you're going to run out of air. So I, I want to try a couple of exercises. I want you to do something like who, 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 and let me who. watch you do who. Who, 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 who. Keep going. Okay. And do we need the microphone a little bit closer? Who, who. I don't need who. to hear it. I need who. to see it. Who, 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 who. who. Ooh, All right. Ooh. You see his diaphragm? Okay. okay. What now you're engaging your diaphragm when you do who? Yeah. Now, can you take a breath where you feel that who feeling first? So like f try to inhale into your balls. And let the last thing that inhale <laughs> is your chest. 
Try and blow it out. All right, now try to push your stomach forward as you're breathing in. You push your diaphragm out and then exhale. And exhale, there you go. All right, the objective of diaphragm breathing is that when you have your diaphragm engaged and when you're speaking, you won't sound like you're running out of breath uh, for a long time. And you can usually sustain that tone for quite a while. The objective is to keep the vocal folds flapping in your throat. Now, if there's not enough air, they start to go like this because there's not enough air flapping on the vocal folds, okay? So I want you to go, ah, uh, and use your hand on your stomach to feel your stomach get pushed out. Inhale. Don't lift your shoulders. Put your shoulders back down. Do it again. Those shoulders should not come up. Just your stomach should go forward. Inhale. Stomach goes out. And then, ah, uh, uh, feel your hand pushing in your stomach. Keep going, hold that tone. And then when you feel the need to breathe, let your hand go out and breathe into your hand. Breathe into your hand. And again, say, let that uh, you, you just keep doing it. Inhale in. Exhale. Uh, uh, inhale in. Okay. All right, so do you see how at the end of ah, uh, you go ah, uh, ah, uh, okay? That's running out of air. So my first suggestion with you if um, is to, to strengthen your diaphragm core so that you have more air and you can support longer sentences and, fill, and let the energy of the sentence complete to the end. So instead of going to complete to the end, and I can be talking to you like this. And then all of a sudden, all of my energy goes out of the end because I have no air. I, you have a capacity. You have a nice chest and you have nice air capacity. You're not utilizing it. So therefore, your air runs out before you finish your sentence. That would be my first observation. And what I would suggest you try to do is get straight. Take some. Um, I have some uh, different exercises I can show you offline or have Dean send you some links to show you how to get that breathing stronger okay because you have the oration you have the mindset and you have most of the mouth skills what you don't have is the capacity for longevity in tones and or orations and eventually you're going to tire out and or lose your audience because everything you're going to talk and then the energy goes out because the air is going to go out and the objective is to try to have it go all the way to the end of the sentence so you don't stop. And each sound doesn't sound less supported in your diaphragm. And, and this is also, just to let you know, Kendo's doing a lot of um, events now. So he, he's doing, uh, aren't you, Kendo, like standing up and M, like announcing, emceeing oh, yes. a lot of uh, stuff. So that's this is also would help for that, Oh, right, my God, yes. Especially doing uh, live performance. Mm hmm Standing up, of course, is always better. Um, any chance that you can just utilize that diaphragm, this will help you breathe better, speak better, um, not run out of air at the end of sentences. Excellent to, way to calm yourself down if mm -hmm. you get a little nervous speaking in front of people. Some people get stage fright, some don't. Yeah. But this whole objective of making sure you're taking in enough air. <laughs> Uh, and, and make sure when you start, you can hear yourself breathe. Mm -hmm. Pull up that diaphragm and then uh, let it out. Excellent. Uh, Grant, you want to try that? Diaphragm breathe? Diaphragm yes, breathe please, for me, honey. Please. Sure. <laughs> I need to try this. I, need to see I think I learned, I learned a little bit of this. Let, let me know that I'm not alone, Grant, please. Oh, yes. Of course. You have to understand, I have a two master's degree, and I am what it is called an IPA phonetic uh, master of dialect because ah. of IPA, the International Phonetic Alphabet. So uh, the, what we're doing is what I had, had to learn in friggin' grad school. <laughs> okay, my darling. Yes. All right. Let me watch you breathe now. Let me watch your hand go out on your stomach. <laughs> 
So inhale through your nose. Inhale. All right. Now, um, Kendo, <laughs> can you see him breathing? Yeah, that is also a chest breather, isn't it? Yes, he is. And you can identify that. And that's fabulous. Because if you can identify it, you can fix it. All right, my darling Grant. Now, yes. I want you to keep your shoulders down. And when you inhale, I want to see your only your hand go forward. Like you're pushing out. I can't say like you're having a baby because like I don't think you know about yeah. that feeling. But maybe like you're taking a dump and you got to give it a big old push, okay? But in the front. Let's let's exercise that diaphragm, okay? Give me a big inhale. No, I got it. I was like practicing. Yeah. Oh yeah, baby. Okay, keep that's it, my darling. Keep breathing that way. All right, now go. Come on, give me give me your inner Yoko Ono. That's what I want to hear, Grant. <laughs> All right, so that's diaphragmatic breathing, and you also need to do more of that. Yes. Okay. The easiest way to do it is lay on the floor. You can't breathe wrong on the floor. Lay on the floor and put a penny in your belly button. And I want you to think about making that penny rise up when you inhale and slowly come down as you exhale. <clears throat> and then as you get better with your breathing, then you want to have inhale, the penny goes up. And then as you as you want the, uh, as you exhale, you uh, take a vowel sound, a very open vowel sound, and let your vocal folds vibrate, and that'll start to get your diaphragmatic breathing in <laughs> Now you know why we don't do Zoom calls for um, <laughs> voice coaching. <laughs> Indeed. Sorry. So can, can 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 we give Kendo another shot at the, uh, Absolutely. At the thing again? And this time with the breathing? I don't know. All right. Sorry, Kendo. Um, Sorry, no. Kendo. <laughs> Kendo, put your hands on your head. <clears throat> put your hands on your head. On top of your head, not behind your head. There you go. Interlace your fingers. Okay. Now, do get, give me a, a racing commentary, keeping your hands up there Just and breathing. Rocket leg. rocket leg. Give okay. me a rocket leg. Okay. Yeah, we'll have a little bit of fun with it. Uh, Grant has found his way to the floor, and I'm not sure how that is relevant to the Rhino's plight, but they have found themselves a two-goal lead, and Grant, nowhere to be found on the defensive end. We see this ball... Push to the corner. There will be a center, and the goal is there. They will score a third. How does that feel? Maybe, a, did... maybe a little bit different, but I, I, I can, I can see where I, I definitely had a lot more authority at the end. And did you feel that you, I mean, it takes a while for you to learn to engage with your diaphragm. Yeah, it uh, takes time. Like, it, it, I, I don't see it as a, I, I think it's more like the mental side of it that I am not thinking of than anything else. Like, I, I, there's a naturalness for me, I guess, to breathe from the chest. Is it it's supposed to be, is, is it natural for a lot of people to breathe from the chest or? No, when you're born and you're a baby, <clears throat> you breathe from your diaphragm. It's because when they put you in school and they tell you to sit still and they give you different things, you were, you were taught how to breathe from your chest because the most natural breathing position is found by a baby is diaphragmatic breathing. And because of stress, because of, <clears throat> tension and all these different things, we start to put it in our shoulders. When you go to the military, it's chest up, chest out, inhale and flop. You know, uh, you have that, to make that chest full. That makes even more of sense because I, I come from a military family. So like okay, my dad was a there Marine. You, go. <laughs> so you were probably taught to breathe from your chest, not from your diaphragm. Interesting. But the, the, the way that you're trying to go right now is you're going to have to counter against that. It, it makes you a weaker voice mm -hmm. because the energy drops off. The ability to have long sentences with a nice supported diaphragm will also give you some more richer, rounder tones. Because mm -hmm. the next step then is we're going to talk about some of the placement of your vowels. Mm. 
That's oh. when we start getting there. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're going to teach you how to place your voice in different places in your body. Place your voice in your chest, place your voice in your head, and place your voice in the top of your head. And each one of those sounds you can go through depending on how you want to do your commentary. Mm-hmm. So these are skills. This is just like learning how to throw a baseball. The kinds of things that you gentlemen are doing with your casting is the same thing. It's like you need to go to boot camp to have the physical preparedness to be on some kind of com cast or sports cast. Or what did you call this? A I mean, that, that sports cast would probably be cast. the most easy thing to liken it to. So, And if you don't have the skill set... What you're doing right now is you're going to get to a point and then not be able to go any further because you don't have the basics. When you build a house, you don't put the roof on first. You need to start with the foundation. And these things I'm telling you about are the foundations of good breathing, speaking, vocal expertise. Mm -hmm. I work with people around the world in vocal. Um, one of my teachers right now is the vocal coach for the dialect at the... Um, uh, Shakespeare theater in the, what the old check, what is, what is the old check? Uh, anyway, she's doing the dialect and this is the kind of thing you do. You go to these, um, or people hire you and you listen. And what we hear is that you're not supporting. You're not doing these exercises. You don't have the, uh, stamina. You don't have the Schwarzenegger, um, <laughs> get routine. down. <laughs> Sorry. You need a little bit uh, of, um, <laughs> physical discipline to make your voices better. First of all, um, Grant, you are sitting with your neck projecting forward, which is gonna put a strain on your vocal folds. You need to yeah. sit more straight, straighter up with a straighter spine and bring the microphone mm. to you. Don't lean into the microphone. So, and your chin needs to tilt down just a little bit because what you're doing when you tilt it back, I'm gonna, you hear how my voice changes mm. and then when I bring my oh, head yeah. down, it changes, all right? Your hmm. vocal tone will change based on how your head is positioned, okay? Hmm. Yeah. So when you see people and they're throwing their head back like these rock and roll singers, that's because they have to pinch those high notes from their nuts. They can't hit them with their voices anymore, so they're squeezing their voice, <laughs> their throats, <laughs> everything they can to get that high tone out. And hmm. you want, I think, more round, lower tones. Yeah. That resonates, that kind of sound. So when you speak, sit up straight and make sure, you know, work with a mirror is a great thing. Go into the bathroom. Yeah. Is my chin up? Is it down? Is it level? Is my chin pushing forward? Is it pushing back? Are my shoulders up around my ears? Are they down? You try to get into a neutral position so that you don't get in the way of your body doing what it needs and can do. Can I just cut in on that? Absolutely. Too? It, it, it's also mm -hmm. going to come big because in the digital world of casting, it, it, it's placement of where the monitors are as well. Like if you're, are you looking down on a screen or you're looking up at a screen, where are you looking at a screen? Screen, as I imagine, should be eye level, right? Um, for, for Okay, let's talk screens and let's talk camera because those are two different things. The screen level, you want to be able to sit down in the middle of the screen should be directly across from your eye level. This for yep. me is a little high, but you may yeah, be taller me, than it's, I am. It's, and it's, you're sitting in a higher chair. Yeah, for me, it's good. That's but fine. For, you, it's different. for me, I'd have it a little different. Um, for me, and also, depending on where the camera is, um, I see Grant looking off to his right, which is house right, stage left. What I would then do is put his camera more into the center so that he would look more towards the screen and I would feel more eye contact like with him. Like my Kendo's is. Exactly. Yeah. I would put mm -hmm. Kendo's camera down lower by about eight inches mm -hmm. and make it more level with him. I see too much um, backdrop over your head. I remember they zoom in and like see stuff from the production. <laughs> well, my concern yeah. is the angle. Yeah. Um, tinted glasses are nice. It's Kendo's theme. You've got to leave it. It's like my top hat. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> I just think. That's great. And, okay, so Grant, now again, let you put your shoulders back, drop them down, yeah. sit my up straight. My armrests are so high and I can't okay. fix it. Okay, lose the armrests. Put them down as low as you can. Don't use them. There you go. And put your back all the way back into the back of the chair and then just bring the chair closer to the microphone. I didn't touch the back when I... All right, so yeah. let me see your chest go back a little bit. Like... Grant, Kendo said his father was in the military. So he, yeah, get that. Okay, there you go. Now, uh, tilt your head down. 
little I'm more in front of me here there you go you're eventually going to need to move your camera okay oh yeah so I, I mean normally my camera's up here and i just have it shooting across okay so now i want you to do the put your hand on your diaphragm yep. uh, put your neck back a little bit like you're leaning against the wall put your neck back and now tilt okay. your head down and forward Okay, now I want you to put your hand on your stomach and I want you to say the alphabet for me. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. I, I actually oh. like stumbled there because I definitely know the alphabet better backwards. <laughs> That's I should have gone Z Y X W T. There are reasons for that, Grant. I'm starting to wonder. Nice. <laughs> uh, yeah, Z Y X W V U T S R Q P O N M L K J I H G F E D C B A. I hate you. Mm. <laughs> it's 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 yeah, I, oh, I hate you. Oh my god! I, I have the Aquafina bottle for me, so I have a better shot. I need to see your titties. I mean, your chest. Okay. Um, the other thing I want you to do now is. I want you to uh, pant uh, one through ten. One, one two, two, three, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. All right. Do you feel like you're engaging with your diaphragm? A little bit. Do you need to have a wedding engagement or do you need to try harder? <laughs> Get a yes. little ring on that finger. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, again, now this time I want you to go back from the yeah. microphone about a foot. Yeah, I've, I, I'm not interested in how you sound. I want to watch you move. Oh, he's in the sunlight. Okay. Now I want you to do who, 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 and put your hand on your diaphragm while you do it. Who, Should I be ahead. expecting anything for oh, my diaphragm? Just keep going. Just do it. Try it. Who, 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 who. I feel it. Not in your like... chest, down in your diaphragm. Make it lower. Make it go lower. Who, who, who. Big breath. Who, who. Who? Like across the room. Who? 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 Bigger. Who? <laughs> there you go. Nice. All right. Do you, are you starting to engage with your diaphragm? Yeah, I feel it like kicking back into me. Exactly. So the objective of this exercise is that at one point when you're going to be casting, you're going to have that feeling the entire time you're casting. Yeah. I think so. He's hit. That's the long term desire. So that you, yeah. if you have that uh, diaphragm engaged, first of all, you're physically engaged, your um, muscles are going and pushing and making sure you're breathing, supporting your tones is gonna make everything connect better. A lot yeah. of people, their head and their breathing don't get connected. And we're trying to get those two things connected. Yeah. This has been a lot in a short amount Sorry. of time. It's I been usually awesome. have a whole one or two semesters <laughs> for this. Yeah. Hendo, no, sorry, we, we're jumping in on that one. Anything? Hey, oh, Ken, fine. Hendo's used to things being I, hijacked because of me. Be, to be honest, this is the yeah. tone. Not, really, this is something. If I'm learning something, everybody tone is, is going to be. Everybody's going to be learning something. At this when point. the teacher becomes the student, it's it, great. Well, yeah, it, it's it's humbling, but at the same time, yeah. it's very necessary. We all need to further ourselves. So I appreciate yeah. the time. Absolutely. Well, thank you, gentlemen, for letting me like masturbate all over this microphone. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. We got to. You have to do some. You know, you get no marbles on stream or something. Have you got something that she could, perhaps Ingrid could could cast on for the first time? No, some I sort wouldn't of, do it without rehearsing. On. I do, I don't do things without rehearsing. Well, without your rehearsal, let me just see show you me guys something. do it. Why don't you no let problem. me watch you I'll, guys? I'll do it. I'll do it. Yeah, there you go. How's, How's that? that? Yeah. Is that fair? Yeah, we can do that. We Sounds can do that. Perfect. I mean, uh, a teacher Ingrid. may be able to teach, but not do. That's me. Ingrid, right. do you do like vocal lessons, like for singing? Of course I do. Go to IngridMcCartney.com oh and you will find my webpage when I have all kinds of different classes. I can teach acting classes, voice classes, uh, IPA classes. Um, all of that's on my webpage. Oh, I spelled it wrong. Lol. Just teaching my... It's like McCartney, only it's not quite as Scottish. See, Paul McCartney is in a distant cousin, but he decided he's from the MC family. When my family, my grandfather, migrated to the United States, when he was in Ellis Island, he spelled his name MC, and they're like, what? 
M-C-C-A-R. No, no, you're a Mac. You're not a Mick. Mick, you're Irish. You're a McCartney. You're Scottish. So we're going to put you there. And that's why my spelling is different. Okay? And and she plays the bagpipes. Trust me, I wake up in the morning. <laughs> How do you spell it? I think I'm spelling it all wrong. I-N-G? I'll, 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 okay. I'll send it. I'll, I'll DM it. Okay. <laughs> Fire. Um, are you pulling okay. something up? Okay, you're pulling marbles up on yeah, stream. I'm, cool. I'm pulling that up right yeah. now. Yeah. Marbles on stream now. Um, oh, should I have to watch this shit now? Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. but it's not going to be. Can you pull it up in the in the Discord so you can see she can see it live? Yes, because I'm at, you know, I'm the oh shit! Drop what the are you? Lighter. Stop dropping your bong. I'm. I gotta put one. <laughs> All right, Grant. I'll send it to you. Yeah, I don't even know your URL, but I'll. Huh? Yeah, mine is very easy, and I can show you different. I have a. Sh- about 22 pages of tongue twisters that'll make you crazy. Oh, I tried half of that. Um, can't leave. It's crossing it. Anyway, do you pull the models up? So, uh, we're sharing the same microphone. That's why I'm away from it. That's why I'm not yeah, projecting. You're fine. you're fine. Oh, baby, he just wants to be closer to the big tube steak. <laughs> you already have a partner. She's next door. That's right. I can't find you, actually. She has a removable tube. <laughs> Yeah, how do I spell your name? M A C. M A C. Yep. C A R. T N E Y. T N. I want to Google to correct it. I can't spell. T N E Y. No, you find it. M A C. Yeah. M A C. Right, do I have to? Just fucking say it. M A C. Yes. All right. I can't. C. Another C. Yep. Okay. All right. R. T. N E Y. How come how come Google doesn't find you? Dot com. But how come Google doesn't? It find doesn't you? matter. Just all right. Go go ahead. Do you shit. I'll find you later. I'll send it to you after. <laughs> Sorry about it. It's IngridMcCartney.com. dot com. I know that. Fucking Jesus Christ! But I want Google to speak. Correct it. Just go. Just go. All right. Where is the? Um, it says the you're a novelist. Game. You're not a novelist. It's another one. Do it, do it, do it, deal with it later. Where is the thing that I'm watching in Comcast? Oh, here, okay. here, here. We're, we're, we're working yeah, on it here. here. We're working on it. Yeah, here it is. <laughs> this one over here. Top left. Top left? Okay. I need more alcohol. I'll get you some. You're going to move over a little bit. Like too- reach over and grab the bottle. Behind, you put it on my hand thing. Oh, okay. Thank you. Oh, my God. Can't teach an old dog new tricks. <laughs> Be careful, you old dog. dog. <clears throat> I'm fine. Here you go. You can you use- I- can you I'm, just spell I'm, your name for I'm me so I can bookmark it now mind. since Biggles is being lazy? I'll, I'll give it to you while you were doing it. I'll put it up on the screen. Oh, honey, you're going to give it to him? Oh, you guys <laughs> are just so bad. Sorry, I always go to the dark side. <laughs> and that was one of the things that <clears throat> was the most difficult thing to do when I did uh, live improv. We weren't la- allowed to go to the dark side. And my <laughs> mind always goes there. So that was a big learning curve for me doing live stand up and improv without going sexual <laughs> all right well okay this is the marble one okay yeah if you've never seen this right. before by the way guys never ever all right so can you give her an example first or maybe you guys could do I, it first no 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 i'll, I'll, I'll show I'll me gladly. what you do uh show kendo nice. do we want to do we want to actually like play by play color this or just solo it we, we can we can just feel it to be perfectly honest, fam. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that there is any color commentary on this. I mean, I, I my thought processes for color commentary on marbles would this. be bringing uh, something different, just a little avant-garde thought process. That's where you need Novanta. <laughs> kind of, yeah. But it, I mean, you can you can lead the way, and I I can I can think up something. As we go. All right. Fair enough. Uh, Frosty Rem. That's a. I know, right? Do we, have, do we have marbles in here? I don't see any on screen. It, it, there's literally the two of us at the moment. So. Oh, okay. Fair. <laughs> All right. If anyone else decides to join, we, we can do more than two marbles. But this, this will be uh, the two, the one on one race of the century, Grant. We're here live. <laughs> yeah. Marbles on stream, Rusty Remnant the track, and this is going to be the one-on-one race of the century between Kendo Slice and Grant CFO. My oh, name's let me put my, my 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 name's Bob McCarter, and here is my friend. <laughs> oh, you want me to uh, 
Joe McNeeson. Why is it Mick uh, everything now? Uh, I, <laughs> everybody, you everybody's Mick something. Okay, we need to change names altogether. Uh, Michelob make Ultra. Fun of my family, I will name. kick your fucking asses. Okay, <laughs> tell me how you do this shit. Come on, let me hear. All right. Word. Okay. Kendo, you start us off. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I tried already, but well, here, here we go. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. It is time for yet another Marvels on Stream race, and we're going to be having as much fun as we possibly can. There's track, Rusty Remnant, the balls, all slotted, ready to go Plinko. Ken, alongside Grant, going to bring you all of the action. Grant, how are you feeling? I'm feeling pretty good, although Rusty Remnant is not a map I'm too terribly familiar with. Endo. So this will be a rather new experience, as I'm sure it will be for the marbles as well. It's time to roll. Like you said, it's time for some Plinko as well. Three competitors, but ashamed RL with the personal record. That's who everybody's trying to beat. Might be a difficult challenge. Already Grant out in front and Kendo lacking behind, but it doesn't seem like too much of a gap that they have to make up because the positions have flipped completely around. You know, that's the thing we love about Marbles as we take a closer <laughs> look here at Grant. As he is going to be bringing a, up... A closer the, look. Yeah, he's going to get a much closer look at Grant. We're still not <laughs> sure about the sponsor of this Marble, but let me tell you, they have gone out of their way to bring the most realistic possible image of Grant Ooh. in this specific instance. We do have some action here up at the front. Biggles and Gendo Slice getting into each other. A veritable knocking of the spears. Kendo may be the broadcaster and host of today's session, but Biggles is another marble we might want to spotlight who's currently beating out a shame's record. And if they could just hold on to this lead a little bit longer, it looks like they've gone rather swell through the tubes. They might be able to set the new channel record, Kendo, but a shame's PR does not quite want to give up yet. No, it does not. But Kendo coming with a head of steam. We are going to go oh. into the salad tosser. And this is where everything gets randomized. The shame's record. Oh, oh my. That's insane. Nobody able to beat that. Well, we can clearly see why Ashamed is a championship-rated player. It is beyond me how they even got out of the salad tosser, Kendo. I'm not really sure exactly what happened, but things could still turn around. Oh. Kendo can't clear it. Biggles, though, flawless through the little spinner, and now out in front has a chance oh, to no. break this record, but the bollards getting to be the biggest obstacle of the day. The pegs of doom doing their work and we have one last turnabout well maybe two by the look of it before we mm. are on the final stretch and biggles getting hung up every stretch of the way grant Ooh. bringing up the rear with a head oh. of steam oh. but gets interrupted let's take a journey back kendo th 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 that that's not good that's uh, what we would call in the industry tough to be that far out. But I think uh, Marbles is a little bit weird with the position of everything because when you're above somebody and below, you know, if you're below and you're further on the track, someone above you might be placed up top. So I'm not exactly sure where Kendo is. Now it's clear that he's in last place and it's just Grant and Biggles jostling Ooh. for position. Grant to come out in front. See, there's a shamed down low. This could be okay. a big bounce, but no one with enough inertia to get over over that railing a close font battle for first place but grant the one to maintain it this is crucial the ballers such a difficult menace to go through and biggles oh no watch in the air he's gonna have to land this if he doesn't it's oh. gonna be over for him just barely hanging on no personal records going down but biggles manages to survive being oh. bolted into the stratosphere <laughs> Kendo comes from behind to get second, and Grant managing third place. And we would say, hey, it's a podium finish, but there were only three balls on the track. Yeah, Very nice, gentlemen. Very nice. All right, I'm going to interrupt you for a minute and ask a few questions, okay? Um, first of all, do you want me to be painfully honest, or do you want to feel good? No. Oh. I'm serious, because I'll tell you what I think, or I'll make you feel good. 
Yeah, brutal lies. No, it's tell me what you think. Brutal to me all the time, guys. <laughs> Are you sure? Okay. Do you want yes, me to yes. do this individually offline? Uh, or do you mind that you're you know, that you two hear each other's criticisms? I Are am okay? totally fine. I'm fine with that. I'll okay. be ripped to shreds. Kenda does it anyway. Okay. <laughs> um, when you, um, I'm going to start with Grant because one of your few things, a couple of your things are just driving me absolutely uh, <laughs> apeshit. Um, <laughs> You are contracting your throat while you're talking. You have not a one relaxed muscle in your throat. It's almost like you're trying to take a shit the entire time you're talking. <laughs> and it just feels like, oh my God, I'm going to pass the big one. And her name is Rwanda. Okay. And, but you never stop doing that. Mm -hmm. If you're going to use that as part of your uh, mystique, that's great. But um, I think you need to use it sparingly. Uh, you have a cadence is, that is very predictable and you need to record yourself and listen to yourself and hear that this cadence is repeating. Um, again, it's your decision. I want to make you aware of what you're doing. Should you choose to change it, I can help you change it. If you want to keep it that way, that's fine. That's one of the things that I really uh, want to attest and, and make clear. I'm not forcing yeah. you to do anything. Now, um, Keno, what I heard with you is the word is not, uh, uh, it's not, uh, it's spectacular. It's spectacular. And there was another word that started with, a, you, you, it starts with an S and you started it with a P. So there's a couple of vocabulary issues that I'd worry about. Um, you have a very nice flow. You're very creative. Uh, you're a little slow to pass the wand between the two of you. Mm -hmm. Both of you, um, I don't feel like you really talk with each other. You talk at each, each other. other. Yeah, that's yeah. Very true. And there's too much dead time and dead air between it. I don't feel like um, you're either one of you are taking the initiative to jump in anytime. Hey, I'm going to talk for a few seconds. I'm going to talk for a few seconds, and I'm going to talk when I have more interaction with you gentlemen um i feel less dead space i feel like you're talking with each other and not to each other or to us um the commentary is uh pedantic to worry so don't don't worry about the actual for me i don't worry about the words you're actually saying 100 percent. what i'm more concerned about is cadence about breathing about enunciation in order to project correctly and or efficiently so that your listeners can hear every sound syllable and know when you have a point and know when you're just, I'm going to talk like this because that's how I talk all the time. Okay. Versus you can talk sometimes and then you have and come back. If you don't have variety, yeah. variety is going to uh, keep your listeners interested. And, um, um, Kendo, you have a cadence that repeats itself and you stay within a specific vocal range. Um, uh about just about an eight notes and i would suggest to you to expand those eight notes musically uh try to go deeper into your chest voice so it mm -hmm. resonates deeper. yeah and and if you have to go all the way up and do a falsetto because you're staying in this very safe eight note area mm -hmm. um and it goes up and down and it's it becomes a little predictable in your cadence and and you don't want that want to have a cadence that's recognizable but not predictable in order for people to return mm. and listen otherwise you begin to lull them to sleep ah are, are you ready to fall asleep yet grant no, <laughs> <laughs> no he's too busy soon. passing a stone that you would give it a try hell <laughs> no i don't know what just that can, wait, you, you i want to run it too. again uh, yeah, I'm again. going to talk about marbles. The last thing I'm going to actually you just watch the marbles and and, and cast it. They, they don't know. They've never seen this track before or whatever. Uh, it's, you, you're improving the whole thing. They're improving it. Well, I've also had a bowl and a glass of you're wine. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you want to you want to give it a shot, Ken? No, who who, who the... wants to? Who who who, who two want to go? I'll do, I'll do a race car again. when you run. No, no, run no, no. You got to do this. Marbles is a uh... great way of of. No, let me see. Where, casting. Where am I going to look? I, I want to go again. I'll tell you what. Do you, okay, do you guys want to go, Kendo? Who, who wants to? You want Grant and and Ingrid no. or what? I'm not. I'll let you do Come it. Come on, you do it. No, 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 no. Just give no, an no, example. No. You want to give an example? I want to give an example right. when I've why practiced it. Why don't Kendo and I, I go do. against? We can try to apply some of those things. Yeah. 
Because I, I, I think, um, yeah, try it. Go, go, pass I off think, each other. And I'll interrupt this time to... instead of staying quiet. Because the last it time I just... No, no, you cast with Grant, please. Well, I want to I wanna kind of correct some things <laughs> that are at least try to help you. All right, Grant, um, Grant sit up straight. So yeah, are you, who's casting? Who's casting? Yeah, Grant you and Grant casting? Yeah. Me and Kendo. I you turned, I turned down my gain because the, the yep. big, the biggest reason why I use vocal compression is for mic etiquette. Because this is a condenser mic, and it just takes everything and just it's like it's like it's compressing all the time. It's condensing all the. The way you're talking so. to me right now is divine. Yeah, so because I turned down the gain. Do yeah, yeah, well, because so. when I when I turn up the gain, then if I get too loud, it starts to peak and distort. Right. Okay, so then use your voice and your microphone and pull your mouth away from the goddamn microphone. <laughs> it's a fucking technique. I want to get loud, I pull back. Haven't you ever seen Mariah Carey when she hits those fucking high notes? <laughs> that fucking yeah. microphone's nowhere near her goddamn mouth. She's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. you know, do the same <laughs> thing. If nobody's watching, who cares? If it works, use it. Don't be stuck mm -hmm. in being plastered against that microphone. Back up and give yeah. me power. And then come in really close for some power. Soft. But yeah. use it. And if you're going to use it, use it correctly, okay? So, yeah. so don't give me that fucking silly voice. Give me a real voice. Yeah. All right. We're also not real, real voice incoming. And, Kendo, I want you to try to give me it more in your lower tones. Okay. Try I to can go into your chest tone. Okay. Well, let's see here. We can do it. We'll just, we'll just okay. do the rest of Remnant one more time. This is a lot. No. I got gotcha. you. Right. I'm sorry. What did you say? Uh, we will throw it what? to the same it... track. Anyway. Go ahead. We got an exclamation point play. Just to, ex to, to, ex to explain. All right. Uh, uh, do we have... Oh, who are we waiting on here? I think we just need Bickles, and then we can. Uh, oh yeah, we can throw it. Well, I think we. I think we have Bickles, but I think you join automatically. No, okay. I, I joined. I joined. So let's see. Yep. There we go. I, I was just explaining this to right. Ingrid because she's not familiar with this marbles thing, but she's looking at you guys anyway with the casting and the live feed. So so she's more focused yeah, on what looks. you guys are doing rather than the action, as she mentioned. Yeah. Uh, we, cool. do, we do also have Austin here, just letting everybody know. Uh, I do want Hello, to Austin. This is kind of a, a work in progress class. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> what I'm going Your to progress. do with you gentlemen is while you're casting, I'm going to throw things out there. So if I give you an idea to make a change, just take it and go with it. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Oh, wait, trust me. Trust me. I'm. Trust me. I'm still working progress. So. All right, Austin. I'm. Austin's breaking up. Yeah, man. Kind of it's, it's just these two That's at the point. moment, Austin. G'day, mate. Uh, it's just uh, Kendo and um, blah, 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 blah. Grant. 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 I'm horrible with names. Yeah. No shit. Anyway. All right. For it's and written in my name. I'd hit exclamation play and just join the marbles yeah. there. Uh, Austin, anyway, you guys go when you're ready. Yeah, we'll go ahead and get everything started. We are here once again at Rusty Remnant. Ken and Grant are going to be commentating yet another race here. Marbles on stream. Grant, I'm excited. Let's see if we can implement some changes and have a little bit more fun on this track now that we know it. Oh, we certainly know this one. We've Kendo, we have seen quite the competitors today and all three of them are going Oof. to be returning with us leading the back of the pack unfortunately is myself but we don't necessarily talk come on grant go back to that. what you were doing yeah. that was working very nice go back to the other voice it was very nice you started very nice and That's you went good. into the old routine go back cool. yeah, grant bring it. leading out the pack here he's got to dodge the ballers we've seen these go in the way of so many competitors today and if we if we see a little bit more of those bollards then and things could get a bit messy but now to return to the champion biggles giggles won the last one just barely 
And now he's getting caught up on a break. Jump in there, Kendo. Kendo. Take his back. Oh, Here's Get my issue. There. We hear Biggles giggles, but we have not actually heard Biggle giggle. So I'm starting to question the actual name that has been given for this character uh, that we have represented by a ball. Giggle. Oh, honey, yeah. we really don't want to hear him giggle. Because when he giggles, giggles, he wiggles, but his money doesn't fold. Don't worry. You don't have, he got caught. <laughs> it giggles. All right. Um, uh, okay, guys. The, uh, Grant, that was nice. The, the start was very nice. Jump in there. I mean, I, you guys are rolling along. You're watching the balls roll down. Um, are you projecting yeah. what they're going to do or just commentating on what they are doing? Mm. Get back into it. Go. I got that. Well, back into the salad tosser we go, Kendo. This has been a wild imagination of possibilities that we can think of. But hey, guess what? I'm first out this time around. We Grant, put your hands on your head. Grant, take get your arms <laughs> off with... the chair. There you go. Put them up there. There you go. Well, you too. In, in the Kendo. <laughs> get them up there. Come on. I, get them up I, there. I can't actually well, do that while I'm, while I'm actually You're navigating the cameras. Sorry, you have to actually work. Excuse yes. me. <laughs> <laughs> well, Kendo clearly so, resisting. Yeah, I'm, resi not I'm resisting teaching. Today. Resisting teaching. <laughs> <laughs> Goodness gracious. This Kendo, is straight up rebellion, Grant. This is the worst type Absolutely. of rebellion. I, I cannot believe we have somebody here giving us really good commentary advice, but I have gone Amen. beyond. It is 100% discarded. I can Drop no longer chin, act upon Grant. things. Drop your chin. There you go. Well, okay. Kendo, while you may have ascended, let's talk about Biggles out in front who has slid his way into the nether regions that sounded odd we will just pass on <laughs> yeah we don't we'll we'll, we'll, we'll continue oh. to think about anything but that grant there are things you yeah. should not say and while we are talking about little rolling balls <laughs> this is not the time and our place yeah i mean i'd rather talk about how biggles just <laughs> flew through the divider that was spinning and trying to knock him off he might actually take round true when these things pop back up it could send him into another deep orbit to space. Well, last time we saw Biggles Marble put on the Superman cape, this time around it will be a delay of game. Not enough to prevent first place, but enough that Ashamed feels completely unthreatened by the balls finding their way to the finish. Kendo will also go through and Grant bringing up the rear yet again. Very nice. Okay. So you guys drifted in and out on some of those notes. How did you feel you did? Yeah, I felt I felt like I felt a little bit closer to the way I want my voice to come across. And I think like one thing one thing I love to do and I, I do when I I'll cast my teammates playing Valorant, the uh, first person shooter game. So whenever I die, I just turn on voice chat and I start casting them um and one thing i really like is um more intimate pieces where it's a much slower paced game and i can get down into this area and i love that so much but i don't know how to bring that tone to everything that i'm doing because i'm so used to the vocal compression and high intensity like yeah, the pattern gets very hard to break so uh, what yeah. i want you to do is get the newspaper uh, and when you're by yourself, read all the headlines and record yourself. And then I want you to get something like Mary had a little lamb. Her fleece was white as snow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then read those and record those and find uh, what, anything that you want to read interesting that is not necessarily a novel. I don't want you to read Fitzgerald to me, okay? I, I don't need that. <laughs> what, I, what I want you to try to do is... Tell me a story, because the whole point of this ride that everyone's going on is you're telling a story. There's a beginning, a middle, and an end. And the, the listener wants to go on a journey with you. And that's normally called the willing suspension of disbelief. You want your audience to go on the journey that you're going to take them. 
Now, this particular journey is you're going to go through this particular thing. You're going to go through this marble thing. Mm. So you decide what is the journey I want to take them on. And if you start with an intention before you cast, you can bring that intention into the action of your voice. Mm. Okay. That's adding a layer of complexity to your voice. So, for example, if your intention on this marble um, is to get up or get away as fast as possible because you got to go to the bathroom, or your intention mm -hmm. of this marble is to show how cool and laid back that marble rolls, or your intention of this marble is to narrate like the queen. But <laughs> what I'm finding is that I I'm not seeing... Don't apologize. <laughs> uh, find what your intention is and play the intention using the um, device in front of you to guide you on a story. Mm. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes. It will be more entertaining because you're going to take me on a story and the vehicle to take me on that story is this marbles thing. Well, we're fooling the audiences. We're, we're not telling them we're taking them on a story. They think they're going to come on and just watch the marbles roll, whatever. If you bring a story to them, it's like when your grandma or your grandpa read you, you know, baby stories or rocked you to sleep at night and they read the Grisham, uh, the fairy tales. It's having that kind of fantasy of what is the story? Because otherwise you're just yeah. saying it's rolling down the hill. It's doing this. It's going over yeah. there. Okay. It's doing this. Okay. I can do that and scrub the toilet at the same time. <laughs> yeah. So I think, Grant, you, you want to go more in that direction is what I'm hearing. And Keno, yep. you have the total capacity to go there, but don't choose to. Mm -hmm. So it, it, as I said, all of this only works if you want it to work. If you have something else in mind and somebody else has told you something different and you want to follow that, go for it. Because, you know, everybody has to make their own landmark. So this is what yep. I do for a living. Well, I used to do for a living is teach these kind of voice classes, teach physical voice, physical. Um, uh, well, did you send to my web page? Yes, oh my I have God, it. Put my web page. Yep. I'm wrap it up. I'm done. All right, you guys wrap it up then. Well, thank you, <laughs> gentlemen, for allowing me to basically kidnap she your fingered page. the combination into the friggin <laughs> office okay and so i no, i sorry. did you know no, she's I, my coach she's great that's all i can say I really the experience is, 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 you guys you know. I, I actually really appreciate I the time and the perspective teach. that's to be honest that is what these workshops are all about and then i enjoy that when they actually get quote unquote hijacked because of the fact <laughs> we are able to gain the perspective of the person who decides that at that time they're going to be the one to talk. So I appreciate we not only got an excellent perspective, we got professional perspective and the coach was coached. <laughs> yeah. The teacher was well, I'd teach. like to come back but not speak next time and just listen to how you run a workshop. <laughs> well, you can watch the Twitch. It's on, it'll be on oh, the I can Twitch. watch Twitch. You send me the link. I'll send you the link. All right, thank you. Yeah. Gentlemen, you have a good evening. Thank you for allowing me in your time. I truly tr really appreciate All it. Right, thank you so much, Ingrid. Yeah. Thank you so much. This was super helpful. And hey, I, here, hope, I hope we'll, we'll, we'll see you again. Maybe I can get some vocal lessons. <laughs> thank you, I would love to sing. <laughs> hey, bo I mean, I both of you take care. Please. Electric. No, nothing on the electric. Nothing on the electric. Thank you. Don't forget to grab your bottle. I won't forget my bottle. Trust me. <laughs> You're still here. <laughs> much appreciated. Uh, no, I, she's leaving. Thank you very much, Ingrid. Oh. I, I really appreciate the perspective because that is, I kind of needed that. <laughs> the teacher I'm, just got teached. Well, that's, I mean, I'm, me. I'm at a point in my own personal casting journey where I'm mentally done, to be perfectly honest. I, I don't have very many plans to continue commentary. I want to be a more of a coach, someone who comes alongside other people in my talent pool and do more to enhance them, whatever I can to enhance them. So even if I don't end up taking 
some of what I heard today and applying it for myself, it has, it puts me in a whole different stratosphere of where I need to work to improve my own knowledge of what I do. So that mm -hmm. is extremely helpful. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I was just saying goodbye. Sorry, yeah, Kendo, keep going, my friend. My apologies. Yeah. Put that so it, yeah, she's uh, she's just tough. She's a very, I mean, obviously, she's taught me a lot. Yeah, and and she's tough, uh, but she's honest. You know, no, what I mean? th to, there's to they, well, there's nothing wrong oh, with you. either of those. Like, uh, to be honest, like where we are, esports in general. My true belief is that we don't take our own business our own industry seriously enough so like commentators people who aspire to be professional commentators more often than not you know that they they almost live up to the trait cliche that everyone in video games is just a high school dropout trying to be the next you know steve jobs only with a controller <laughs> yeah, it, it, you're right. It doesn't work that way. There and needs yeah. the, the miracle. The thing is, too, the way that she can, like, you know, I can go from a stream and think oh, I did an ma amazing job. I thought it was brilliant, and then she'll just come and go. Uh, uh from my professional background, from I've heard across the world, you need to do this, you need to do that, you need to do this. And she's just seeing it as it doesn't. She sees it as it doesn't matter what you cast, if it's esports or whatever it is. She's seeing how you cast it. The yeah. techniques of how you cast it. What we examples tonight, right? She didn't care, she didn't care about what games you were, we were talking about or whatever. It was about how you're breathing, how you're projecting, how you are, you know, emphasis on the words and and all that. That's what I'm learning a lot. And with theatre and for you, Kendo, as well, that I thought would be really good because you're more of, as you said, you're not casting so much online. What you are doing more is in front of the audiences, aren't you? In these events, you're the MC, you're the you're the face. That's going to help you a lot, I, I would imagine, as well. Well, where I find that I employ a lot of the techniques that were both put out as well as brought forth as far as where I am in my voice, because I usually speak in a much lower tone when I'm doing mentorship. I, I, I find myself with a very similar issue to what Grant does, and that is I'm almost trying to change my voice into something that it isn't to create a certain sound and you throw in some of the things that we've already watched today and gone through discussed it, it, it's essentially trying to get a violin to play like a viola <laughs> so god it, it's it's stupid yeah. it, it, it's like you're they you're going to you're going to pluck the hair off a goat and expect uh, to Pick daisies. No, it, it doesn't work that way. Yes, go ahead. I um I have a call to run too, but afterwards, uh, can I give you a ring as well? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I'll probably be ending on time, so fifty minutes or so. Okay. Okay, sweet. All right. Well, I will catch you later. Uh, okay. See you, man. See ya. Bye, bye, bye guys. Bye, bye. But in all Perfect. honesty, the, the the perspective that was shared was something that I think we all needed. It's a wake-up call to take what we do more seriously. So I I apologize for my personal demeanor coming into it, mainly due to the fact I personally have not looked at my own commentary and taken myself seriously over the last probably month, month and a half. Uh, partially due to the fact that I hit a wall when they decided not to have me on a stream. So like they they went through they they took six of the ten talent that would have been usable. Or a stream during the uh, playoffs of CRL or Collegiate Rocket League, and Psionix. I was one of the talent not selected by Psionix at that time. 
Uh, that all happened at the same time with like two or three other things, and that is the first time in a very long time that I, you know, they always think the show must go on. I went into that spot, and it I hurt. knew. It, that feels I knew, like it hurt. Well, I knew. I knew just by my own sound how uninspired I was. It's like I'm I'm hurting my co commentators. I'm hurting the product. I need to get out. So I, I literally asked somebody, please cover me. Cause that, that's a question as well, too. Well, how are their judges, for example? Like, I mean, once again, you guys know that I'm judged by a professional next door. Yeah. She could judge other people. I mean, she's only gonna judge people as as one judge, of course, there's more people to judge, but she's a professional. And to me, I always throw that at to her to say, you know, why can't I be there? Why can't I come and she would give me a million reasons as to why. In your case, Kinder, but like I mean, out of those what, ten or so people, the A stream, you said, Why what do you feel you were not selected? Because of that reason you said you weren't bringing the energy. I I was surprised I... when we cast it together, you'd bring a lot of energy. I don't know. I still don't know. And probably my copium has been I've detached myself so much from it that rather than pursue into, well, let's find what I did wrong, let's find what I can do better, and let's angle myself for a push for the future even more. I just straight up gave up. And I decided, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to push the people that are better than me, quote unquote, or I, I think are better than me to be the very best that they can be. And we'll yeah, see if we can, we'll see if they can make a, make a job out of it. And I can see if I can make a job out of what I do. I think you, you're right. Like I did to, to me as well is nobody's better than anybody in anything mm -hmm. it we are we it's how we are like how we are fed like you know how mm -hmm. companies like casters on a general perspective for a certain thing that they're casting i don't think there's anybody better you can get a million casters well, so let's say you can get 50 casters in a room all different casting fields say a couple of horse race casters and stuff like that that are really great <laughs> at fast space, and then throw them into a, a different game or, or esports or any sort of live commentary basketball game or, or a hockey game it, people might not like it or the employees might not like it it might doesn't might, it might not flow with what they're looking for specifically but you as a caster you're going to cast differently than other people that's what i find as well too like I, i'll cast differently of other people every time and they're going to be better than somebody like yourself or grant or anybody else no it's not a matter of being better it's being better at like how best you could be at yourself at your casting. Whether they like it or not and use your casting is up to them. But you're going to bring your A game and you're going to continue to improve your A game every single time is what I look at. Uh, that's what she also teaches me too as well as Ingrid going, you know, it, you're never going to be the same. But you got to find your character. You have that great character, I feel, that, and maybe they just didn't feel like using it at the time. They didn't like it. Maybe they wanted more mm. I, I don't simple play-by-plays. Who knows? I know that with a lot of streams, they just want play people to do cool play-by-plays. They don't want people to throw puns out everyone. You don't do that, but they want they don't want people like myself. I know there's a lot of uh, you know networks out there that go they don't like the puns. They go, can you oh, stick yeah. to the script? Stick to the script. I'm like, that's not me. Okay, fine. <laughs> that's not my casting, and I'm never going to work that way, and I'll never be chosen for that so i can't beat myself over it saying why 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 is that person better than me yeah. it's because they're just they're choosing it which that's, that's I, all I don't want. know that they the reason was because people were better than me at the moment i i could i can go through and try to devise a well this is what i did wrong here etc like i can theorize i can have an idea uh i just straight up in the end wouldn't be doing any more than just that theorizing coming up with vague ideas of what i may or may not have done wrong etc but you so. but the thing about doing wrong is that because you're comparing yourself to them no not really i okay or to other people like the, the right and wrong is very difficult i mean 
What Ingrid was speaking about was just general 101 breathing exercises and mm -hmm. all that stuff. She wasn't saying about whether or not somebody, you know, your casting was better than somebody else's casting or something. It was just about techniques, which yeah. we can all approve on, obviously. Well, yeah. That's, that's, that's something. That, but, to, yeah, at the end of the day, honest, yeah, I mean, you're going to listen to another caster and you're going to listen to them side by side and listen to your casting and, like... I, the differences? I, in all honesty, think I needed that angle. Somebody to look at my commentary and the way that I conduct myself during a, co a cast and tell me, hey, these are things that you do good, but these are things that device-wise, uh, the way you sit up, don't sit up straight, <laughs> etc., and you conduct yourself, hey, you could do so much better. I think mm -hmm. I I think I needed somebody to literally tell me, hey, these are things that you could desperately do better. Work on this, this, and this. <laughs> That's exactly what if I've you, been working on for the last. Uh, if you six apply months, mate, yourself, yeah. oh my goodness, you can do so much more. <laughs> yeah, I haven't got in. She she hasn't got in. Like I haven't got in. I've been casting for about a year or so, and she's been teaching for but for about a year, not full time, but. I give her snippets and stuff like because I've usually been so busy. I've stepped back from a lot of casting now because I want more technique that she's teaching. So that's what I would be doing. So now I'm going to practice the technique and less actual online casting and then apply that later. I but mean, that's it, the thing. And like, I don't want to get into the how do I deliver better. I mean, I, I was talking to her about how do I get away from the so's and using the same words. She's basically shutting door on that, saying, let's work on your whole breathing. And, I, and, and, I love and that the fact first. that multiple times she used the idea of recording yourself or getting in front of a mirror. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. those are under too. those are underutilized a lot of the time. Like it, it, you want to know the difference between a hobbyist and somebody who actually has aspirations to do something professionally? Record yourself. Listen to yourself. Go back and hear over what you just did. Yeah, the practice is fine, but literally stretching yourself and expanding yourself through the recording, through trying to use different breathing devices, through trying to really develop your sound in different ways. I had never truly thought about just how deep tonality goes but now you know I, I had my own maxime wenger off moment just now <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly but. you're right and and i well i i don't know if you guys have the time but i always at least watch back my streams yeah and i was listening to one earlier today and that was from a while ago and i was sitting there and i was almost like ready to punch the ball going what what am i saying like i'm an idiot i'm an idiot i like I'm, I'm making so many mistakes and I just listen to myself going, okay, okay, I know what I'm making. I know what I'm doing. I'm not going to do that again. I'm not going to do that again. That's for a live stream, of course, but just even recording yourself, reading, as she said to Grant, headlines, read something, read something out loud <laughs> or anything, and record yourself doing I, I it. I kind of, I chuckled at that just because I really want to hear Grant read things as the Queen of England. <laughs> Or anyone, <laughs> anyone for that oh matter. Oh, Prince Charles. <laughs> yeah, I, know. I do declare that today <laughs> is the Marblestone <laughs> stream and we That's shall terrible. have fun. It will be excellent. Stop the race. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually a great video I watched the other day of, of some of the <laughs> people that acted the Queen and Charles and all that in the, in the, in the royal family playing. It Charles! <laughs> And she was going, I'll execute this boy. How dare he overtake me? Send him to the gallows. I mean, it was just fun. But yes. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's been a lot. I, I apologize oh. for the crash. I told you she was going to come. But, uh, you know, she's she just takes over. I'm, I'm she just takes over. That's what she does. I, I'm, I'm tossing the mic to Austin for a second because Austin's been here for half a year. <laughs> yes, <sorry. laughs> just dying to get something in. So, Austin, go ahead, my friend. So uh, I actually have a few questions to ask. So well, I told people I've commented for about maybe three three years now. I've been doing that one for a little bit, and every single game, every single game I've done, I've never commented alone. And I'm getting to that stage. I don't want to commentate, so I'm just going to be in the commentary box alone for, for a few some weeks. So I'm wondering how my how I can keep my stream comment like my stream, you know. Oh, not so bored in the sleep, but by myself. Okay, so 
I will say that there was a lot of you breaking up on that. I'm not sure if it was because you're mobile or maybe it might actually be the internet on my end. Because I, no, I, he, he was breaking up. I can confirm okay, that one. Okay. Okay. Can but you, can you as far, he he actually did type uh, a few things. Uh, he's going to be solo casting a uh, nine inning sin game, so like a MLB the show style style game. I'm assuming, and uh, he's trying to get used to talking a lot. And I believe he can correct me in the DMs, or we can try doing the uh, the talking portion again. But I believe the question was how how do you conduct a a solo commentary where you are going elongated amounts of time and you don't get bored either with yourself or you you present essentially really well over say a nine inning baseball game. And uh, Biggles, I I know you have. Well, go ahead, Austin. What was that a roundabout, right? Yes, I'm just gonna... It was exactly right. Okay, okay, perfect. So uh, Biggles, I think Biggles, your perspective on this might be valuable, just because you don't always solo cast, but your Formula One races, they can take hours. Yeah, you're right. They're not really generally. Uh, uh... Uh, Formula One races I do is fifty percent or so or less because uh, or, or I racing and stuff because I, generally an hour an hour and a half to two max because of the fact that anything longer is too either boring for the audience as well and also casting is a lot to do. I, I hate for one casting by myself. Generally nine ninety nine point nine percent of the time I'll say no I won't do it because I need to rebound off somebody. It kills my voice. I get too hyped. I'm hyped getting excited about something that's going to go on and this and that and this and that and then I. Uh, and there's a pause. There's an awkward pause because there's nobody to relay that on. Okay, that's me. I haven't spoken to the coach Ingrid about that too much, but that's something I don't do anyway. Um, second of all, if you do, well, and I've done like 24 hour Le Mans and stuff like that, but that's because I, I, I was a set tone because there's not a lot of action that's going. And it also depends on what you're casting on. Mm-hmm. If you're casting on, say, Eight hours of a Rocket League tournament by yourself, I can know you would imagine that would be difficult, <laughs> absolutely <laughs> difficult. Because it's go, 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 and barely any pauses, right? It's fast, depending on what you're casting on. If you're casting on, as I said, baseball, uh, yeah, there's a lot of talk, there's a lot of calm times during that, so you could kind of like talk. You, you basically have to be sorry, I'll just sum it all up. If you're casting solo. Use the audience participation and, and, and cast with them, relay with them, talk yeah. to them, and, and then cast the game. Kendo? You also have to be able to set yourself up. So you, in a way, you play both roles. Keep your own pace would be my number one bit of advice. So it, you don't have to worry about, oh, I should be, like, I'll use Rocket League as an example. You don't have to worry about, oh, I should be doing a goal replay at this point. So there's a specific specific set spot that I should be doing right here. When you're solo casting, all of that doesn't matter. Like throw everything you know about timing completely out the window and bring a narration of what you have in front of you to the forefront. Have fun with it and make, make content during it so it it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be perfect i I think a for baseball specifically one of my one of my favorites from back in the day (laughs) was you could listen to harry (laughs) carry back in the day who was uh both an incredible baseball announcer or television, but was one of the major voices of the Chicago Cubs for the longest time. And the one thing that Harry Carey was known for was his ability to take little abstract rabbit hole adventures. So I, it, <laughs> Saturday Night Live parodied this and made it completely out there. And they're like, 
Hello, welcome to Larry Clary here. <laughs> we, we got. I remember that. No, I remember that. We have. <laughs> we're not watching the Cubbies play an old game of wonderful <laughs> baseball. And we got Sammy Seltzer coming up. He really knows how to swing it. Well, let and me you're being tell married, you. aren't you? By Saturday Night Live, that means you you were making an impact yeah, on the, it was, the exactly. community, aren't you? <laughs> uh, but I don't want to talk about Sammy swinging it today. Now we're going to talk about too, isn't it? <laughs> we're going to talk about what Sammy had for lunch. <laughs> it, this is more thing of... that I was mentioning before, wasn't it, Kendo? <laughs> it's about creating character, isn't it? Yeah, that's unique to yourself as well. What one hundred percent? So people he... go, they know that you know when they hear that, that's him immediately. Uh, so he was somebody who. <laughs> Like, yes, baseball, there's a lot of statistics. You know, find the statistics that you like. Uh, especially if it, it, the nine innings that you're going to be casting is part of maybe a league play. You can go through, get do a little bit of research, 30 minutes or so, find some stats on some players, and you can go through historical stats. Be like, hey, this person might hit a lot of uh low inside curve balls <laughs> and 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 can i cut in sorry Kenda? yeah go ahead and re because you're casting by yourself relay it with the twitch people mm -hmm. have your twitch audience actually ask them questions about that do you think that the who's the, who's the best player in the league and all that sort of stuff engage with them about that if you're running out of, of questions or statistics have them answer and relay them with that yeah, quick problem with that is when you post season, so I don't really pay attention to post. But it just asks questions yeah. anyway. Like, who do you, even even in the real world, who's your favorite baseball player at the moment? Who do you think? Who do you think will win the whatever? Just ask questions yeah. to Thanks. the Twitch chat. If you don't know what to say, a lot ask questions to the Twitch chat. Right, Kendo? I mean, that's I, 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 me I, personally. I on the Twitch chat as a backup. I personally don't use that method too often, but I'm also someone who's very seasoned in what I do. So I, what I bring to the table, I'll, I will usually, if I know I'm going to commentate something, I, I'm going to have like an hour or hour, 30 minutes of research. I'm going to have a talking point on each individual, <laughs> or if it's just two players going up against each other in say MLB, the show, I'll be able to go through and talk about one, the lineups of their teams, but I'll also be able to talk about their tendencies if I have a record that I can go back through and be like, hey, this person's really good at this. If there's a if it's a league or something that keeps a set of statistics, oh, that's a paradise. Like you you never run out of things to talk about. And okay. then once once you have all of that, and I, I highly recommend write it down in a notebook. Have fun with it. Get it. Get right in front of your sure. face. Then take your time in putting out some of that information. I, I do agree that if you need to resort to turning it into almost like a a casual viewing stream, where the audience, the chat, also gets involved, that can create a very immersive experience, which is special. Like there will be people who bring people back just due in part to the fact that they are willing to communicate with the audience and have an immersive experience, a special, intimate, together feel. That's true. And, and on a quick, on a very quick point, you bring up that so that I that have you ever mentioned really before that Kendo, but I was surprised. I had the luxury of uh, casting with the chick that won the DHL uh, commentator award, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. for F F1, she was flying over and, and she had that chat. She met David Croft as being the, the caster for F1 for at least a, a decade plus now, right? Yeah. She The one thing she told me about, because I asked her, I picked a brain about, you know, Crofty and all that sort of stuff. She said, one thing I really noticed, he has a book. He carries yeah. around this book with him and the book has all the notes and all this details and statistics and stuff of all the previous races. She mentioned that and I was surprised. That's something you won't find online. All the people would even know about this guy, a uh, casting. You just mentioned that yourself, isn't it? Make a lot of these notes down, write them this, down. This is just, them. this is just my collegiate book. Like mm. I, I, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm holding up, I'm holding up a, like a, it's Chroma keyed cause it's literally a green notepad. 
but this entire bit, more than half the notebook, is collegiate notes over the last year and a half. There you go. Like I've so, gone, I mean, I've gone through. Casters now, it, it's a book, isn't it? I don't have one, so this is what I'm missing, right? So I, uh, here's, we go, we go through this one right here. This one was the book three, four years ago. And I have like maybe wow 15 more pieces of paper on this. I have two other books aside these. I that, noticed you had a pen tonight as well yeah. in your hand right, oh, yeah. in the stream. Yeah, I, 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 I actually literally wrote down on this notepad all the improv games. So. Wow. Okay. <laughs> But well, you see that, that that's I think that's a key, and I, I'm I'm starting to write notes now. But I need a book. Yeah, I need a book. I think that's crucial, mate. As you mentioned that, that's why I had to point it out. Professionals like David Croft and stuff have a book, and people don't know about it. Kendo has a book, and now we know about it. Yeah, I, I think it's general. You you do have a lot of people who will have a large set of notes. It's not always as obnoxious as mine is. <laughs> I think you get more. The, and another 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 point back there real quick is Austin was also saying, well, it's new, right? So then he doesn't have all the information. Well, here's one thing I did do the other day, Austin, the, uh, is I went and reached out to the drivers before and I spoke to as many as I could and took notes from what they told me before the event. In this case, if you're doing baseball, reach out to the players if you can, chat to them one-on-one. -on -one. And then write those notes about how they feel about it, what's their past experience has been. And then you've got a book of notes, essentially, or a bunch of information before the league has even started. Isn't that, did you agree, Kendo, like another way of getting gaining information, even though you don't have any, when it's a new season? Hmm. When it's more... <laughs> uh, so I'm, I'm getting ready to post something really quick. I'll post it in the casting workshop. Uh, there is, there was one time I actually showed my notebook on stream <laughs> and we had a lot of fun with it. Was <laughs> they, it like one of those, it was a, like episodes of Lost, like a map oh, of the uh, island or something like that? Well, it, it, our, our, <laughs> our social media guy is very good at what he does. So he made a TikTok out of a, okay. one of the moments that I had on a stream. As far as time where I do not have information, a lot of that Nobody, is... <laughs> and then we told us, Kendo has a demo note. <laughs> 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 oh, I love it. Look at you writing down the notes. So your acting is brilliant as well, too, mate. I mean, I, so I know that... We do, we do little things like that. that yes. yeah. But, yeah, that's great. Like, I, And I apologize. I did not represent myself very well with Ingrid... Don't worry about whatsoever. that. Whatsoever. Uh, like, it wasn't it? Yeah. Mentally, I'm. <laughs> mentally, I'm still kind of run over. So it, we we adjusted ourselves after the first 10 minutes or so. And it's like, okay, I'm fully <laughs> along for the ride. Let's invest and see how far this rabbit hole goes. I kind of want you. I kind of want you. But no, nah, yeah, it was a little unprepared. But yeah, it's fine. Nah, so. <laughs> yeah, anyway. It, it was nice because I hadn't. I hadn't really thrown myself into anything like that in a very long time. And I legitimately will try to practice a little bit more of the diaphragm breathing. Like what was said, I, I'm going to go back. I'm going to listen. I'm going to see oh, me too, mate. if yeah, how I'm, much of a yeah. change I did make. I, I don't know that I made enough change to be notable. Granted, Grant and I were laughing so much back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> when she was trying to correct us live. <laughs> it's the exercises, of course, is that she was focusing. And she was shooting advice. Seriously, she was sitting next to me. She was like, she was just looking at, you know, you yeah. guys focusing on that. But once again, probably getting off Austin's yeah, just, thing. Just a little bit. I have a, I have a question for you to wrap it up at the end from, I need help from your, your perspective of hey, it. How, of how long, how long do you think you'd take that for me to answer the question? Not too long. And Not I, too long? Um, okay. Okay. So we'll, we'll, we'll leave it at that. Yeah. And I, I'll try to oh. cut everything off in 15 minutes. But uh, Yeah, yeah. No, no. Real, for, yeah. Real, go ahead. Sorry, Austin. Go ahead. All right. Let me ask you a question. You yeah. say it's not too long. What's not too long for you? Like five minutes, maybe 10. What's not too long for you? <laughs> you know, that is the best question, Austin, because I am so long winded that really 
too long could be 30 minutes very easily. <laughs> Ask his wife. That's not too large. Ask his we, wife. We, we have, we have, <laughs> we have full on Austin microphone though right now. So yes, Austin, floor is yours. If you want to ask questions, I'm gonna let you be the one to continue the dialogue, and we will do our very best to answer. He's like the spotlight on myself for yeah. once. This yeah, great. Take the spotlight, Austin. We got Austin Smith, everybody. All right. Uh, oh, I had a good question on my head. I can't. Oh. So, there's some names I can't pronounce, like, I don't know how to say this guy's name, I know how to spell it, but, like, it's so hard to pronounce. When you, like, go to the person, ask how to pronounce them, and practice it right after? Sometimes, yes. That is literally the best way to do it. There will be times where you have to do it on the fly, and if you make a mistake, a lot of the times people in chat will correct you. Uh, more often than not, it's the caster's right to butcher people's names over and over again <laughs> until they are properly corrected. But I, what you just put out, yes. Get in that person's DMs. Be like, hey, I'm doing the commentary on this, uh, the nine innings on Tuesday. I'm just throwing a date out there. And I was wondering, how do I pronounce your name or your gamer tag? And once you know it, yeah, practice it a few times. Make sure that you are good to go in that respect. And you'll find that the interaction you have with a person, regardless of their level, if they're a professional at, you know, say MLB, or if they're just a hobbyist in a league, they're going to have a lot of respect for somebody who actually goes to them. It's like, hey, I'm doing the commentary for you this weekend. How do you say your name? So I can say it right. So like, uh, yeah. you can make a personal connection right there and literally have a fan for life because you cared enough to make sure that you were nailing their name. That's brilliant. That's absolutely brilliant. That's a, that's an awesome, very good question there, Austin. That's something I struggle with all the time, and I think Kendo nailed it right on the coffin there. Reach out first. That's something I need to do more of because I just butcher their names, as you mentioned. But if you do reach out, and that's something I'm, I'm I've written this down. I've written this down as notes. I'm gonna. I need to do that more. You're 100 percent right, Kendo. They can have so much more respect for you. Give or ask nicknames. Is there? I cast a lot of people in Scandinavia with these names that oh, blah, 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 you know, it's so hard to pronounce. <laughs> but if you if you do reach out to them and say, look, I'm going to struggle with this or, you know, phono pronounce their name, well, give me a nickname. They'll give you a nickname. That's a great question, by the way, and I've got that in my notes and I've highlighted that. Thanks. Yeah. And okay. Kendo, mate, that's the best way to answer it. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. That's awesome. Can, Go yeah. ahead. Kind of, are you stalking me? Because I have a calendar with the written dates of what I'm commentating, and I have it's on Tuesday. Had... Yes, it's on a Tuesday. <laughs> it is the day after the Fourth of July, and that's Tuesday, uh, uh, July fifth. Fam, I, I I will say this, and I will say it once. It's a one in seven chance. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I as much as I'd love to be stalking every single person. Uh, oh, Jesus wait Christ. a minute. <laughs> Let me rephrase that. As much as I could be stalking every uh, no, oh, never mind. I got the. <laughs> no, nah, it, it literally was a wild guess. We were throwing something out, and it just happened to be right. Gosh, if that's one in seven chance, I wonder how your chances are out of one in fourteen. If that's just one out of seven, double it, square it. Kendo, uh, my question. It, it was raised before, sorry, and you can have the last, you can have the floor, Austin. I just want to, there's one, you can answer it real quick there. Mm -hmm. You brought this up, and I did it, I've done it recently, mm -hmm. and I might continue to do it. Radio commentating. Now, yeah, there's a, a there's a YouTube stream that commentates the live F1, well, broadcasts the live F1 races with no pictures. It's not legally allowed, okay? Mm -hmm. The pictures of the cars going around track and all that sort of stuff. We'll find sessions, practices, blah, blah, blah. However, there's a track map with some information that's there. To me, I was like, casting it is different because I'm used to casting pictures of what people can see. It's, it's a different adventure for me. Mm -hmm. Key you mentioned tonight, radio commentating. You said, and I was writing notes down saying, 
you've got to explain every single thing that people can't see and elaborate on it. My question to you, can you continue on that? Like any tips and pointers for me to do that for essentially radio commentating? There's 10,000 people watching live that can't see pictures. Okay. So how can I improve? So with radio commentary and then the back and forth that you get between a play-by-play and a color, uh, for a play-by-play, you are, it's an art form. One, you're the one setting the pace for the entire stream or the entire commentary flow. So if you talk too much and you don't whittle down your words to a point where your color commentator, one, can get in a, a half decent point or two, you're, you're just continually talking. You're never going to find a way out to where <laughs> anybody else can have anything to say whatsoever it'll just be a mumbly bumbly schlog over itself over and over uh you want to try to describe in great detail with as few words as possible oh okay so wow okay so like in rocket league You'll find more often than not, it'd be like, here's a shot on by you know, Mazer, and it's going to be saved back the other way. But the moment I start describing the save, the moment I start describing this, that, and the other, one, I'm kind of stealing a little bit from my color commentator. But two, I'm also adding more time by being more verbose. Now, Am I saying that you should completely cut every single bit of fluff, including your character, out? No. You want to try to still integrate portions of your personality uh, as well as some of your vocabulary in the play-by-play. You may even want to venture into a little bit of the... uh, the questioning narrations. So we'll, we'll go formula one. You just go through, you, you see a pass, uh, you know, Whitaker got a really good run on the inside there of turn number one. And uh, we see them going through two and three, right? <laughs> we are, we see them going through two and three with very little issue. And you, you give the toss over to your color commentator uh, talking about maybe a, a small little factoid in narrative form. And a lot of the times a good color commentator, they're going to pick up on that and they will either continue to color in between the lines or outside of the lines, whatever they want to do there, as well as, you know, add even more of a vividness to the picture. So the color commentator, I'm not quite, the same level of exact rolledness. Yeah, we're making up words here. Uh, it's not a perfect description the way play by play is, but a color okay. commentator does add to the exoskeleton that the play by play will put out. Oh, brilliant. So you're trying Absolutely. your play by play, the idea of radio play by play is you are trying to give enough of a skeleton as to what is going on in the play so those who can't see it can visualize it. And then your color commentator is grafting skin and muscle on the bones. Oh, absolutely. I'm, hang on, I'm running out of pages. Okay, okay, yeah. I, I was about to say, she just talk skeletons. I was like, so that means that I'm losing grafting skin. You read my mind. Oh my God, that's brilliant. <laughs> I'm, is going so, to I'm circling this. <laughs> no, that's spot on. And yeah. you summed it. Thank you very much. No, thank you very much because that's it. Radio. Um, oh my God. Yes. Biggles is going to need Kendo, I love you. I love you, Kendo. It's lovely. <laughs> it's, I've, learned, I've learned so much tonight, mate. I've learned so much. Likewise. Go ahead, Doss. Go ahead. No, we keep on interrupting you. We'll do it one more time, and now we'll just stop. Austin. I say, Miggles is probably going to need another notebook for <laughs> next time. <laughs> just jotting down pages and pages and pages and pages of notes. I'm just sitting here trying to, trying to find my notebook. I'm just running around my room. My roommate is looking at me nuts. 
Did, well, the key yes. tonight that Kendo had mentioned as well uh, was notebooks, and I think that's exactly right, and that's why I'm starting to write that down. But yeah, notebooks, mate. That's it. I, was a, I, was a, I got this to look back at my next casting for that specific thing and then look back and go, we talk about, we talk about ventures, we talk about... And the, the key words that I've just highlighted was that Kendo just said there. Detail, describe in a few words, as little words as possible, what, what, what the play is. You think, Ray Kendo, if I was to sum that up? Yeah. In, it's not a perfect definition, but it is as close to as clear cut as I can be. Yeah. That that's clear. That's, that makes perfect sense to me. And yeah, I'm going to really work on that big time. Absolutely big time. Because you can cut down the words to a point where, you know, <laughs> even a caveman he's can do it. He's in a red car and he's going fast. That's it. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, yeah, you can be like <laughs> red car, yeah. left Fast. turn, right, yeah, exactly, chicane. You're right. <laughs> yeah, like you can cut it down to a fault, but <laughs> yeah, you're right. It, it's and then passing it off to to the other caster. Yeah, excellent. No, brilliant. That, the that skin would, skeleton. That would be the, the most. Keys. That would be the most important part of your pacing, though. You want to make sure that you're leaving yourself open enough that your color commentator, if they have anything, they can break in very easily. Like, if you space yourself out in some of the things that you're trying to say, there's just maybe a little pause here or there. The color commentator yeah. will be able to pick it up very quickly. Just kind of like the little two pauses I threw in there. They'd be able to, well, <laughs> it, yeah. it, it's literally the tiniest of margin. It, you, you slipstream somebody with a draft pass. There you go. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Somebody anyway. give this man a pit lane pass. Cause he's, uh, <laughs> he's in the box. Uh, yeah, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm thankfully not doing actual real racing. Uh, I'm, oh, I God, I'm happy. But uh, yeah, more practice sessions and stuff, but AKA practice sessions equals AKA radio commentating practice, which that's all that matters. But yeah, it's fine. Brilliant. I like it. So Austin, Lessons did you... Learned, notes. Austin, you got any more? Uh, we'll, we'll try to focus on you here for the last 10 minutes unless... No, that's it. Austin now. That's what I said. Austin can, can run the show out. I, that was my question to you, mate. Yeah. I can be like maybe two seconds at the ocean my door because I really have bark any moment so I'm just making sure he doesn't run it. We I think we might have lost Austin there. <laughs> he went to Shetty's door or something. Ah, though, okay, right? okay. Yeah. Uh, don't right. be embarrassed, right, man. Perfect, You're perfect. getting friggin' great advice here. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. Ten minutes. Uh no, I mean, it, we, we, I can go a little bit longer than that if I need to, so feel free. Whatever you'd like to talk about. If you want to end on time, then I could kill us. It, this, this is probably the most I'll ever talk, because I'm a color commentator. I'm not a play-by-play. -play. I'm yeah. a color. I'm, I'm the guy behind. So I'm used to so just sitting there and not being able to talk for maybe about 15 minutes and getting like a minute and then sitting there like a sitting duck. So... You do understand the concept of play-by-play, -play, though, correct? Yeah, yeah. So I actually like the idea, if you are going into a solo cast, approaching it from more of a color vibe. So I think you're actually in perfect confines. Do a little dip and duck with the play-by-play -play in moments, but come to it from, let's do a color narrative throughout. Let's let's maybe talk about uh, some of the abstract portions of the game. Uh, give me give me a, a few uh, factoids about the way that the the hitting system works in MLB the Show or whatever game it may be at that moment. And th through that color commentary, you can create a narrative that you can then expand upon. It can almost be like its own little rabbit trail of commentary within the gameplay. Uh, a good example. A good example would be you see a lot of like the sports YouTubers. Uh, there's some NBA 2K ones who are really good at this. But they will start talking about and creating a storyline for their player as they're doing a... Uh, 
as they're going through and they're, they're actually playing, like, live the life of your certain player, like your create a player, my career sort of types of things. And they'll basically come alongside their own gameplay, create a story, create a narrative, and talk about as they commentate over. It doesn't necessarily have to be play-by-play -play in all spots. But give you this storyline throughout. So definitely feel free to, as you're solo casting this, be a little bit more color. Don't 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 take yourself out of your comfort zone thinking that you have to say everything that's going on on the baseball diamond. And uh, and also don't take yourself out of the comfort zone because not everybody can be like. Oh, that's a high fly ball to left field. <laughs> Smith is back and it is gone. You know, that's not it. <laughs> that's what I do. So oh, yeah? that's my comfort zone. Oh, well, if that's your comfort zone, like you're already good off. <laughs> Guys, kind of is stalking me. Ah. Jeez. <laughs> Either his luck is good or he's stalking me. And I just don't know that. I'm... Where is that was that was very 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 good advice there. I'm, I'm writing those notes down as well. I never thought about casting a player and through their career uh, like a story. That's actually what? pretty good. That's I like that. Let me let me work on uh, putting up Michael Jackson's "Somebody's Watching Me." <laughs> Somebody's watching me. Yeah. No, no, that's dude, you, you're so full of talent, mate. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So you like you you realize that? I know tonight that you know in. Ingrid came in, there's a different approach to it, but she doesn't have the experience that you have with casting online with the True. knowledge of games and casting, which is a whole different ball game, of course. True, which is but I absolutely crucial. never in my life have I been vocally coached, and that was one of the most revealing moments I've had in the past five years. <laughs> just how just straight, just, up, straight up, but yeah, but no, I mean, just how much it, 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 yeah. it's actually quite flattering that she would say, like, you have a lot of the tools. <laughs> so <laughs> that, that, somehow uh, befuddling to all, I have stumbled upon <laughs> the voice of life within me and I am doing a decent job in commentary without the guise of a breathing coach affixed to my nostrils now my, my, now yeah, we're, yeah. we're gonna find we're gonna find our inner human being our, our, our inner child because we're gonna go back to the breathing basics and we are going to did, create but, you know what i did to her one time just for fun as <laughs> i actually sent her professional casters some professional like form like with crofty or whatever right i sent her video snippets of that when she was doing it for some other people and she came back to me, and I did it one time. I didn't want to waste too much of her time. And she came back with me, like, a, 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 like pages full of notes about how he could be better as a caster and all that. So a professional caster, of course, for professional sports. And she had, like, a notebook, notepad full of notes. And he didn't want to waste too much more of her time. And then I said at the end, oh, he's actually a professional caster. And she's like, oh, I didn't know, but I can tell you what. I can pick up on all these things that he needs to improve on. I'm like, oh, okay. That's, that's so amazing. So, that is so that's what amazing. she does. That's what she does. She'll, she'll just find things. And, and once again, nobody's ever perfect at all. But we're going back onto that subject again. Fine. I'm sorry. No, it's it's yeah. fine. No, but well, my subject was you was, aside from what she's going to pick on, obviously, when it comes to pick on, of course, there's fine improvements, is that you remember, once again, a casting stuff that even with somebody like Ingrid with her expertise, I'm going to give you the information of what, how you cast, like the specifics of what you're casting and how to improve on that. Mm -hmm. I learned so much from you. I, I learned a lot from her, her, as you know, with my casting. She can't teach me what you teach me about yeah. the specific games, about the receipt research, how to contact people, how to get that information, all that sort of stuff. She doesn't know that. That's not her field of expertise. Mm -hmm. That's your field of expertise. And that is what you do fantastically great and can give people information about that. Appreciate it. Which is what it, you, you learn, you know? This is, once again, this no vocal coach on the planet, as regardless of diplomas and stuff they have, can teach you what you can teach you about online casting. Yeah. Specifically. Online, remote, yeah. I, I can definitely yeah. give you a lot of perspective on that because 
five years of experience is kind of a lot in this field. There aren't too many. So it's in a gold mine, mate. It, I mean, yeah. computers went around five years now. I mean, yeah, <laughs> things go fast. <laughs> I don't know. I'd go games that go far. so fast, don't they? But they go so. Uh, the games develop so quickly. Yeah. You you, you either do the you either <laughs> uh, fail at some point or you live long enough to become Thorin and down everybody <laughs> just because you are the greatest of all time. I've been around for fifteen years in this industry, and yeah. I am the czar of all things esports. Well, this industry is. Been about around, it's not, it hasn't been around any long in about five years. Esports really hasn't. I mean, Rocket yeah. League, the not game, really. the game itself isn't old yeah. enough to. <laughs> Rocket yeah, that's League, about I think most it's only of it, about seven it? I mean, years old now. Overall, I think what if you go back to about five, six years mm-hmm. is probably the birth of Counter, esports uh, entertainment. Yeah, you go. Yeah. You actually go back. You can go back further. Counter Strike and Starcraft have been doing it for a very long time. Ah, oh, that's right. Starcraft. I remember those competitions they used so, to. Have. Yeah. Okay. But that's probably yeah. There, yeah. there was, was never in, quite. In, that was in person, but not online stream per se. So much. Yeah. But at the same Wasn't time. Yeah. At the same time, I will say the online. If anything, online is just a a segmented version of what is live. Like being yeah. it being live and in person is a treat. You Absolutely. can enhance so much. I when hate you're able casting to... pro post production or all that pretty awesome jazz. Yeah. But anywho. Okay, you Austin. Be, yeah, I'll let you go. But you need to be I you know I'm seeing you, Kendo. I to me, I know that casting online you can do all that sort of stuff. I want you. I, I want to see you be the MC guy that runs around hosting these massive events around the world, mate. Is that is that to, to you? Is that something you want to do? Because to me, that seems pitch perfect for you. I currently work as the contracted MC for a lot of local Unified events, and Unified does the uh, League of Legends proving grounds right now. So as they go throughout, like uh, they they will do a lot of League of Legends b stream style production but they also will run a certain collegiate conference and those that collegiate conference they will journey to each one of these schools and put on their uh localized uh oh, i'm losing my mind they'll put on their localized lan esports festivals and those are mm-hmm. things that I will yep. go as an MC and a esports ambassador. I'll talk to yeah. people who have never heard about esports before, or people who are in esports, and I will do a lot like what I'm doing right now: mediate, connect people, help people understand just how big esports truly is, how big it can be in the future. Relay the fact that we are talking about one of the fastest growing industries in the United States. And everybody, my my personal passion, of course, is for the collegiate side of things, because right now it is growing faster, especially in Rocket League than ever before. There are collegiate programs developing themselves where full ride scholarships will be on the line in a matter of years. Wow. Wow. It's like it was, scholarships. I didn't think that. But okay. Well, yeah. There's there's so many. EGF is a is a gaming company. They recently did a high school national championship that they hosted in Disneyland World, and it was broadcast. The Rocket League portion of it was broadcast on ESPN three and ESPN plus. Wow. And they were and you playing. Need to be the they MC were playing for this stuff. You <laughs> they need were to be play- the MC. <laughs> I'd, I'd love to be. No, you, do, you can. I want you to be the first person that's up on the microphone talking about it, going around there, all that sort of stuff, blah, blah, blah. And yeah. then when they go to the casters and play by play, man, let them do that casting play by play. They get the two people in the booth there. They talk about all that. You would need to be the guy that's the voice of all the show. You're the guy behind the camera. People see you, you run around. That to me is like you can do either the, the casting as well, but oh. that to me you're above and beyond that. You should be the 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 voice of esports that people just go. There's Kendo, there's Kendo now. Yeah, we following can, you. We could definitely have around a lot the world of fun with that. I agree. Absolutely. Sorry, we got too much time. Thank <laughs> you, mate. All right, Austin. Let you go. Austin, I'll, I'll let you have one more, my friend. Right, uh, any so, anything you wanted to talk about? It's not a question, but 
something that I think that I should say. I started commentating just anything esports wise, sim, AI, anything. Uh, the thirtieth of June in twenty twenty, and to be honest, it did it changed my life for me for the greater good. Yeah. Uh, in January I started F one. I joined. I tried to get into a different league, but my computer is so bad to the point where it wouldn't let me even get through the loading screen of the starting loading screen. Oof. And I met Pickles through there a couple months ago. And through then, I met you guys. I met the CCA, uh, CRL, and a bunch of other places. Mm-hmm. And I just want everyone to know, next week today, I will officially be commentating for three straight years of nonstop commentary. That's awesome. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you'd be at one in the morning, two in the morning. <laughs> God, it could be eleven fifty at night. I would be there, hopefully be on time. Not if on time I'm not, but I'm still there. And I just want to share it with you guys because, well, Biggles, you started me with F1, and Kendo, you've been helping me through the way. So yeah, <laughs> I just want to you, my friend. Keep it up. Keep it up. Keep it up. Exactly. You're just starting the journey. Yeah, Dude, but... I just want to dearly from the dearly from the bottom of my heart. I just want to say thank you guys for this journey. You're welcome. And I hope it, hope it goes on for a long, long, long time. And hopefully I get my kids into this. If <laughs> I happen, that is. You're welcome. And thank you. Because I am of the conviction that this is not just one person helping another person. Like, I truly believe that these casting workshops, what we have had today. Yeah. Was there, was there a hijacking? Maybe. But at the same time, if there's Maybe. one thing that I'm very, if there's one thing that I'm very bad at, it is structuring what I do. <laughs> like I, I, yeah. I do a really good job at planning things out. And when I have things that are planned out, oh boy, is it ever good. This entire month has been something lackluster as far as a plan goes. But more often than not, when things are hijacked, it's for the greater good because we get more people involved. We get to hear their passions. We get to hear their perspective. And in all of that process, we are able to improve ourselves through more than just the one dimension of me talking. <laughs> and Kendo, it was not maybe just a hijack. It was a hijack. Oh yeah, it was it was it was straight up a hijack. I loved it. <laughs> I loved it every second of it. You lost you lost your job for a day. That's how bad of a hijack. Pretty much. Like I was She's I was done it to straight me. She's up done it to in me school. Before. Sorry. I, I was <laughs> straight up in school. You, I had to give away my graduation cap and I came back looking at like you may as well just shave the beard right off of me. You've seen my whole baby face. <laughs> I was I was reverted <laughs> back to the he, days he of old. But he had, to, well, he had to get back his diploma. Well, like I said, what what she hijacked was the technique. Yeah, if anything, that's all she did from a theater I, and all that sort of. I yeah. appreciate not, it. Not the actual. I love it. Broadcasting perspective that you would do for streaming games and stuff I, like that, which is your excellence. So I didn't know all, what she was going to do. Honesty, I just called I her in. It. I was like, she. I was free. She was free. I'm like, that, that, I can't remember. So you're, I you're, said she is your neighbor. Yeah, she's my neighbor. That she's retired. Insane. She has a lesbian. She, the, the, her and her lesbian fr- uh, her, her wife, are retired. Them, them a neighbor. She's been my coach for some time now since I've moved out into the jungle. And yeah, and and she's. I, I worked for a lot of theatre that I did in the city, and uh, and then now she's been helping me a lot with my coaching and stuff that like that. She's so like, you know, amazing. you're really getting into it, and she's teaching me a lot of these things. Like as I said, the breathing techniques, the the the. Yeah. passion that the, the, I, I, I was sitting up straight when I cast and all that I sort did. of stuff that she was going on before or with Grant that's what I do a lot now I need, however I didn't do it before I slouch in my her, chair and I stuff. need to send her some uh, <laughs> monetary compensation because I don't feel like I deserve that sort of thing for free <laughs> she did it I, I, she did it to, I remember sending something to Chickstar and I said Chicks, I told a few people actually that sent some stuff and to even with Chickstar and I said like uh, you want to send her a snipple or something and she'd come back at it and she comes back hard I'm like 
I'm yeah. like, be, be warned. She's not going to be pretty. She's going to talk about the things that she hears. Let you know. Yeah. It, it, it seems seems like harsh way, but it's like once again when when she says, "Do you want the reality? Do you want me to, to say it how I'm saying, we, how I hear it?" That's the way she works. Man. We, we want to tell you all the nice things. No, I, I actually I got out of that pretty well because I got a lot of nice things. But at the same time, it was a very harsh reality. Like, you need to get better. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you, you'll never get things. nice, man. That's what I've learned with people as well, too. Because <laughs> you, I don't get nice. I mean, I get uh, Austin, you know, yourself, you said, look, Biggles will love your commentary and stuff like that the other day. It's great. Get that. But you know that for a fact, Kendo online, people don't, <laughs> people are too afraid to tell you. Hey. And that, especially yourself, too, that's been around a while. They're going to say, Kendo, look, I think I feel you're probably a little bit bad or this, or you could improve on this or something. People are too scared to say that online, mate. I wish they were. You know to be straight I know, up. I wish they were, but they will. They are. Because they don't want to feel that you're insulting somebody. Even though to me, you know, I could tell people a million times, you're never going to insult me. Say anything you want about because, my casting. But people if, will now do it. They won't. Trust me, I'm not scared to tell anyone, insult anyone. If if I know you're dog shit, I will walk up to you and say, dude, you're terrible. <laughs> Absolutely. I, hope so, yeah. I am not holding it, back. Man. But people don't do it. That's the problem. And that's what I like about her. She's just neutral. She doesn't follow the stuff online. She doesn't go through all the leagues. And she doesn't even Discord. She has Discord, but barely uses it. She'll just tell you straight up. She'll listen to you and go, 10 minutes of her time, come listen to this, tell me what you feel, and then she's going to go focus on that immediately, regardless of what you're streaming. She doesn't even know the game you're streaming. All right, anyway, yeah. we spoke right. a little bit too much about that. Thank you very much, Kendo. I appreciate it. And we're all Great, mate. we're all really just starting our journeys here. So it, it's, it's amazing to think that we keep on grinding. We got the opportunity for greatness. So that's going to be a workshop for the day. And our next one probably won't be for 11 days. I think it'll be the first Monday of July. So that'll be when we come back with it. I do need to get the schedule out for July very shortly. I, hey, I am uh, going to be. I'm, yeah, what's up? Yeah, the first Monday of July is the fourth of July. So there you yes. go. Yes. Fireworks show. We should literally do a fourth of July. Ooh. <laughs> Sorry, you I, wrap it up, Kendo. Wrap it up. Wrap it up. Yeah, we'll have to figure <laughs> out the dates by the look of it. Then it may end up being the seventh of July for that first one. I probably don't want to hijack Independence Day. That's that. That'd be a. <laughs> That'd be low brow. <laughs> hijacking, hijacking America would be the best. Man, thing hijacking America. You want burgers? You want browers? No way. We're going to be hijacking your sound box. All you're going to be able to hear that going to be. Woo! <laughs> anyway, we're going to head out. My I, dear I, citizens. I, I literally and King go. George, <laughs> you're still the colonies. Go back to your colonies in the new world. Yeah, go. Sorry, Ken. <laughs> yeah, but I, I literally will be going to a youth camp where we get to uh, be the mentor for some young folk. I'm also driving the bus there. So uh, thoughts and prayers, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm praying for the people on the bus. Exactly. It's going to be, I'm no, going to be gone dude. seven it's days. Get, like, get in the back. Get in the back of the bus, Bart. Get in the back. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we'll talk to everybody later. Looking forward to seeing everybody. Thank you to J Turbo, by the way, for the follow as well as Flair. Y'all are amazing. Have a good one.